everybody.
everybody. Hello there, everybody. Hello there, everybody. Hello there, everybody.
Hello there, everybody. Welcome to the Mystic Tavern, the only place that knows the true meaning of life, but cannot tell you this because the FBI is off looking at us. Hmm. Oh, watching us. <laughs> anyway, let's go into a recap. <laughs> but you have to clarify what you meant just in case. Yeah, it's oh. what happens sometimes. So... After their little adventure of Nars' father, Rickard, the party head back to the Bottle of Wonders to find the half-orc st store clerk, flustering being questioned by some guardsmen. They inform Rickard that they are looking for Narf, and by extension the party, and also Zook and Charlie. Oh, look, they're there as well. Yeah, I forgot about that. Hmm. Town speaker of Brian Shander, hmm. Duvessa Shane, wanted them for a mission. Somewhat warily, the party go with them to Brian Shander. Outside, they find... Yes, yes, I know, Frank. Gelf is her name, everyone. <laughs> Outside, they find another party called upon by the town speaker, led by a rather full-of-himself paladin that this writer elected not to remember his name. I, on the other hand, will remember the name. It's Harrow, <laughs> the hero. <laughs> it's the greatest part of the recap ever. <laughs> It would appear that Devessa knows much of the party, calling out Larkin and Pastel on their shape-changing nature nigh instantly, but seems friendly towards them. She mentions that there are multiple areas of Duragar building sites, building something out of a strange metal. Lao puts two and two together, that's, no, that's one and one, thanks, Window, and gets that it must be related to Shearer rising in some way. So, after naming their prices, the party accept. A set of axe beaks for faster travel. A speaker's permission for Brian Chandler's Bottle of Wonders branch. Money, a large sum. The speaker's help with discouraging prejudice towards shape changes. Assistance finding Dazan. And of course, lately, just added to the list, free travel to a destination of their choice. Well, no bad choice. It's like what happens party when you head... Wheel of Fortune. <laughs> it, it really is. <laughs> and a brand new car. <laughs> <laughs> the party then head to bed provided by the speaker to awake to their axe speaks ready for them let's meet them now but let's rewind a little bit first uh, this is just a short thing uh, as you are being escorted there with Charlie Zook and your three favourite people like Harrow uh, yeah, I remembered the halfling's name I didn't remember the fucking hero's name he had the best name ever the halfling's name was Sugar, the sweetest halfling you ever meet. Mm hmm. Yeah. They, they have a subtitle. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, as you're walking by there, you actually see Timber just walking along the streets as well, and he seems to notice you a lot. Oh no. Uh, he actually just gives you all an evil glare and continues walking on. Um, I, I smile and I wave back at him. You hear like a hiss. <laughs> Why is he mad at us? We haven't done anything wrong. Mm. Mm. Uh, until eventually you reach a place known as the Golden Star. Now, this is a very luxurious place compared to everywhere else you've been. Like you all actually get a room to yourself if you wish a room to yourself. No. Zook is absolutely loving it. Charlie feels out of place. <laughs> Uh, is there anything you guys wanted to do during the night? I know one person said a certain thing they wanted to do, but are questioning if they want Murder to do it. So... In their sleep. Oh yeah, forgot about this. <laughs> um, so, do you want to do it still? Yeah, what I said. I'm gonna do it. Can you explain exactly what you said? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna stab like a piece of fabric with the shard that we found. Okay. See what happens. Hold on, let me roll a dice. Fabric. Because fabric is li the least likely to cause uh, a a bad situation. Yeah, logic. Okay. Yeah, okay. No, that's cool. So as you stab into the fabric in your room, you just see it slowly start to turn to stone, and then turn to ash. Is it just? Eyes wide, pastel is just like, oh, that's not good. Uh, maybe we shouldn't have this. 
maybe maybe it's a bad thing. Maybe maybe, maybe I shouldn't have it. And then she just like throws it in her bag and like covers it over. <laughs> bag starts turning to ash. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh... <laughs> I would like to be identifying things whilst I sleep, if that's okay. Well, yes, yes. Uh, did we like did we identify the things that could be identified last time? We just used Nomad. Yeah, we did. We used them as an uh, uh, exa examine boy. Yep. Can you remind me what we identified? Oh, so this is what you identified, Nomad, because it was forced okay. upon you. The sword. Yeah. Do you know a character called Link? Uh, I do know of a character called Link. So it makes those sound effects as you swing it. Yeah, okay. fair. It just goes. The sound effects of like, yeah, yeah, yep, basically that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yep, that's the like. That's funny enough. That's when you do a small swing. It just goes. Mm -hmm. Fair. Uh, fair. The bag is, for whatever reason, not able to be identified. Hmm. Does it sound like this? Uh, and you're not it? sure why. It's just completely blocked off. Or can I like look inside it? You look inside it. There doesn't seem to be anything inside it. Okay, if I jingle it about, is there like hidden compartments? Doesn't seem to be. Seems to be one open space. All right, that's just a bag. I don't know who gave it to me, but I'll just go and throw it to them. Def definitely magical, but you can't identify it. Hmm. Okay. And and we, couldn't, that it for... we couldn't have Nomad investigate the shard, because if he touched it, something bad would happen. I don't necessarily need to... I don't think... Let me look it up for identify. I don't know if I need to touch it. Or could I do, like, identify and get real close to it, but not actually touch it? Use I don't know how identify works. General uh, magic through there. I should. I've you must it. touch throughout the castle. Yeah, no, I need to touch it, so I won't touch it. That's fine. Fair enough. Was there any other things? No. No? No. Okay, then let's have the Pokemon Center music. Do, 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 do. You've all woken up. We're level seven. Uh, and for whatever reason, because I no longer want to hide it, all in your head is like five days. Okay, so. Hmm. You wake up in your luxurious location, you know, for Icewind Dale. Mm. Go down. They've settled, uh, giving you the free breakfast. Uh, as you go downstairs, if you wish for it. Uh, and you kind of see, just like at the entrance, Zook just seems to be sitting there by himself, just on the step. Uh, is he is he okay? Um, I, I don't, I don't know. Um, Maybe we should talk to him. Uh, well, you're the, you're, you're the one who's good with people. What? Where did you get this idea? Lyle smirk. <laughs> Listen, if I talk if I talk to him, I'll end up saying the wrong thing and I'll make it worse. Lyle will tell most of you aren't the right person to talk to someone. Lyle <laughs> Lyle will walk up to him. <laughs> um Are you doing okay there, Zip? Oh there, there, I'm doing fine. Just waiting for Charlie. Oh, okay. He's uh, he's been a bit down lately. Oh, what is it to do with what happened before with the um? Well, well, a person he considers a father figure, Macridus, is dead. So that's yeah. part of it. Uh, and he's also beating himself up because, well, he looks at the rest of you guys, and you're pretty impressive half the time. And he's trying to reach a point that he's not quite there yet. So he's doing extra work, like I've done my run. Just thank God we're getting axe beaks. I <laughs> did not. I did not do that. I don't know who did that. I don't even know if they're going to even be able to get axe beaks for me to actually ride, considering how small I am. But no, oh, it's all right. They've got small people harnesses and stuff. Anyway, um, um, I'm... I actually wanted to talk to you a lot. With Charlie not here, that helps. Um, sure. Do you want the others to hear this as well? Do you want to come with me? Sure, or... sure. Well, we'll uh, walk him over. Oh, Nova over there looks very silent. Wow, he's really enjoying his meal. Yeah, he's he likes his food. 
so cheese and crackers Nova is unable to speak due to food he's crying because it's cheese and crackers uh, um... <laughs> uh, quick, quick pause. The reason the music stopped is because, well, the the ambient stopped is because rhythm is offline for the moment. I'll play it again when it, comes, when it comes back on. The one time we use it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, should I continue or should I just wait for? No, you can continue. 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 That important. I'm just, I'm just letting everybody know. So, uh, first of all, uh, and he kind of looks at Nova for this one. All right, I know that you're a bit of a cheap asshole. You don't have to say anything. Good. Um, cheap shot. Well. <laughs> and you remind me a bit about this tabaxi that I also consider an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> but I understand that uh, you are good people. And your mission you put us on is a very big one. So I just want to confirm that we will come back and we are going to help you. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. But there is a caveat that I have to make clear. Go on. Charlie, to me, is a lot like my son. So if something bad happens to him, I'm going to be prioritizing him over you. So if you're about to die, uh, don't expect me to help if he's also dying. No, that's completely understandable. Yep. That's still okay. just nods. That's good. Well, um, kind of like looks at you, Nomad. Uh, when you're finished, I mean, we can easily catch up to you guys. Just mm -hmm. send me a message. Actually, no, send Charlie a message. I'm less likely to listen. Okay. I will do. <laughs> At least he's honest. Yeah, I, I would. I understand entirely. Prioritizing hey, the family listen. is most important. That's how it is. I've been like that for a good hundred and sixty years. Jesus, Damn, he's an old gnome. I know, but I don't look over twenty-five, do I? <laughs> that would imply that you're still in the creed, I think. You're very nim. You're very nimble still. I forget how long you people live. Hey, what can I say? About 10 or 15 years ago, life changed. I found a person known as the Crashing Waves. It was great. And turns out this training is almost an anti-aging thing. Like, I still die of old age, but I don't look under 25. Yeah, anyway, let's see. Around now, Charlie should be reaching his limit, and you just see him collapse in front of the door. There he is. <laughs> hey, anyway, Char that was all. Hey, Charlie. Um, don't overwork. Uh, yes. Don't overwork yourself. Yeah. I, I'm not. I'm not overworking myself. I'm completely fine. You see him like getting up. Oh, look, see, completely warmed up. Okay. Oh, that's good. That's good. Uh, let's see. And, oh, look, there's the loud one. You just see, like, Hero rushing down the stairs all jolly. <laughs> Sugar just behind. Very tired. She's still got, like, a little mask on her face. <laughs> uh, so at which point, some guards seem to enter the building. Just looking Whatever at yours. Like, whenever you're ready. Oh, good. Oh, good. You're not. You're not. We're going to es escort you to your axe beaks. Uh, Nova, you're, not, you're, you're free to take your plate. You uh, feel free to eat it throughout the entire game. What's the, what do you mean, game? <laughs> Nova just nods. <laughs> Are you guys ready to go? Uh, I'm ready. <laughs> I'm ready when everybody else is. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. Okay, please follow us then. Uh, and they seem to uh, lead you just to the edge of town. 
uh, where you find a familiar look location, uh, Narf, is the location you met Tolbin, the person I definitely remembered mm. with all the axe beaks. <laughs> He I seems to be waiting know. outside. It's like, ah, oh, excellent. You're all here. This is definitely the voice I had last time as well. <laughs> <laughs> or was he more older? He was older. Uh, uh, <laughs> that's old people, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> that was a grand <laughs> old, old people make uh, the Channel, channel print, uh, Prince Charles. Uh, this is uh this will be my assistant. He'll be taking the ones that are not you six. You'll be coming with me. Please come with me. Okay. Right. Follow along. Uh and yep. he kind of uh leads you six to a this will set off almost like a mini outside farm kind of area. Uh and like as you branch. look out you see Yeah. But inside a city. And you uh Look out, and you see six axe beaks all kind of just running around. Mm. Uh, and he starts pointing them out, each one individually. So keep an eye on what ones you think sounds good. Uh-huh. Uh, that that one over there, he is. Uh, that is Randy Red. He is like the uh, the leader of the group. Uh, he is. Uh, uh, and you actually look over to him. He is a uh, a light blue feathered axe beak. Oh, by the way, in the stream info bit, mm-hmm. that's what a basic Icewind Dale Axe Beak looks like. So use that as a template. They're fluffy. Mm-hmm. They're very fluffy. Uh, but this was a light blue one with the tips around his head. The feathers around the tip of his head are all got a fa- um, the red. So red tips around the face. Uh, and he's got a red strike down his beak. Mm. And he definitely, he has his head often up high, proud of himself. Uh, he's actually uh, named after the famous axe beak riding champion, Red Hot Randy. Do you get it? Randy Red. <laughs> yeah, uh, that I beautiful crystal ice beak over there, that's crystal. Uh, and you see this pure white looking axe beak. It's got a scar over their eye, over her eye. Mm-hmm. Uh, she looks rather angry. Uh, but her beak is weirdly shiny for an animal. That one over yeah. there, that's a bit smaller than the rest of them, but obviously taller than most of you. He's Tiny Terry. <laughs> everyone, just, everyone just looks at Lyle. Uh, be careful with that one. He's very competitive and he's very easily angered. Uh, and as you guys look at him, his feathers seem to be a mix of white and greys, seem to mix along. and He's got a blue lines going across his beak. Uh, Lyle, Lyle will turn around to Larkin and say to him, Well, don't make it too obvious. That's going to be my one. It's the only one I can bloody fit on. Oh, I, I... <laughs> no, no, you can, you can fit on any of them. I thought that one was for, was for Freya. Was Freya's, Freya's now to, uh... realising he's got a, she's got to run next to everyone the entire time. <laughs> we'll just get like Larkin to put her across his lap or something and she can just ride side saddle. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, that one over there, the extremely, uh, no, that would have been a bad word. Very chubby one, very fluffy. And you see one that's extremely fluffy. 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 Uh, His name is Cho. Uh, He, believe it or not, is actually the fastest of a lot of them. Like, uh, normally an axe beat goes around 50 foot per six seconds, but that one goes 60 foot by six seconds. However, that's only if you have uh, dangle a bit of food in front of it. Hmm. Incentive, nice. Yeah, yeah. If he doesn't have incentive, he's actually the slowest. Uh, as you can see, he's got a, a very nice looking green underbelly. I know, a very rare color for axe beaks down here, but it is what he's got. Uh, oh, um, also, if you're eating food, don't be near him. He will nick it. You actually see him look at you all and he does like a little, you see his tongue just go across his beak. Uh, I, I think he's uh, hungry. Right. Oh, he's always hungry. That one over there, uh, and that one's the brother of Tiny Terry. Uh, he also comes with his own soundtrack. You just hear... Dun, 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 dun. His name's Hop. Uh, 
Uh, he, we called him Hop because I don't know if you could tell, but as he runs, he's got a bit more bounce to him. Uh, doesn't make him any faster, but he just jumps up a lot. Uh, although, as you can see, his jumping around has been a problem at one point, as the top of his beak is slightly cracked. He hit the roof, uh, which is why, if you look <laughs> through the stables when he was walking by, he actually points it out. There's a little bit I had to repair there in the roof as he broke it. Uh, but aside from that, he looks just like Tiny Terry, just taller. Uh, yeah. And that one over there with the orange and fiery red feathers is uh, Mr. Neverember, named after the long-lost king of Neverwinter. Ooh. Also, this one hates squids. Don't know why, it's just a fear. It's a very particular fear. How did you find that out? Oh, uh, a fish salesman came by and you see he had like a crate of the squids and other fish and uh, he basically went into a panic attack. It's like his mind was under control or something or his sons were in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but Nomad's don't be fooled, like... he's actually stronger than most. No, it's like, this is my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> panic attack boy, anyway. and I'm like ah a connection <laughs> <laughs> anyway that is the six of them uh, feel free to uh, approach the one that you wish to ride on your journeys uh, but please be aware as he like passes you all like a pamphlet Darth you don't need to read it you've already studied it Excellent. these are the things not to do for example do not just stare at them in the eye staring contest is very bad they will attack you uh do not kick it in the leg. It will kick back, and it kicks harder. <laughs> uh, I'm going to I'm going to look over to Zook, like if I, he's within the eyesight, to, to to just like give him a look. Like, don't. <laughs> you do. You do actually look over to another bit where this there's the other guy talking to the rest of them, and Zook's going up close to him, and he does like a tiny little kick of it, and the axe beat kicks him back, and he goes flying. <laughs> 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 so you just hear a load of does anyone understand gnomish uh, no nope. I do no. Not. Well, if he did understand gnomish you'd know there's a lot of swear words going as he flies <laughs> not surprised uh, obviously all these things good luck uh, make sure you become good friends with them first get them all classic saddles uh, don't worry we've got them all fitted for your type of size uh, I was told to make one adjustable for a pastel. Uh, uh, okay. <laughs> okay. All right. Uh, not necessary, but thank you. That's yes, what I was told to do. So, uh, go on. Um, anyone want to go first? No, I'll start um... talking forward. Pull some food out of his bag and throws it in the air towards Cho. <laughs> Cho, with ridiculous speed, almost does a spin in the air as he catches it in his mouth and lands right next to one. you. <laughs> I like this one. <laughs> we're be it seems up. to like you a lot as well, Narf. Yes, yes. I told you it was easy. Sort of in his neck and everything. Yes, yes. Food's a good motivation. I like this one. <laughs> uh, you see it like do a little shake. It's like... <laughs> Seems uh, very much like you, Narf. I've got my one. Show it off. Against the world together. I like it. <laughs> it's five left. Uh, Nova I'll... very politely said he'll pick last. Uh, I'll walk up to Randy Red. <laughs> <laughs> yep. That sounds about right. Yep. <laughs> Um and yeah, I'll start. Uh, I'll start stroking, st stroking him on the back of the head and seeing how him and Freya get along. Can you roll me an animal handling check? Yep. Nineteen. Nineteen. You see this very proud-looking axe speak like axe head up tall. Slowly starts moving its head closer to your hand as you're stroking it. He seems to be enjoying it, but doesn't want to show off too much that he is. Success! <laughs> um, Alright, we got Hop, do, 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 Bristol, 
t- Tidy Terry and like Mr. Never mm-hmm. Um And he's going to walk forward towards Crystal. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's going to lower his head and put out his hand for it to like sniff and do like a little like almost, like half bow and just kind of wait for it to approach him. Okay, can you roll me at animal handling as well? Uh, Picture it more as a curtsy, but yeah. More, more like a curtsy, yeah. <laughs> like, he's, like he's approaching a hippogriff. Like he's a, exactly like he's approaching a hippogriff, yeah. Um, so I rolled... Hardly specific. Mm. Uh, oh, come on, Dean, be, be polite to me today. Um, <laughs> no. That is a 13 flat. A 13. Uh, at first, you think with the little scar across the eye that this creature is quite strong, but it looks a little mm-hmm. skittish at first. It actually takes a few steps back. Mm-hmm. Uh, but wow, after a bit of persuading, <laughs> uh, after a bit of persuading, it does seem to slowly get closer to you until it accepts your, I guess, kindness. Cool. I'll, I'll then just start like petting it and just look at it over and. Have a little bit of R struck on my face. This one makes like a little um little undertone little noises. Oh uh, I'm gonna start it. drawing it. Once once it's accepted me, I'm gonna do like little doodles of it. Uh-huh. I like it, it looks cute. Okay. Okay. Tiny Terry, Hop and Miss Never Ember next. Uh I know which one I'm going for. If if Pastel walks into the, the gated enclosure and um, sort of like squats down with her mm-hmm. hands on the floor and then looks up and then just jumps as high as she can. <laughs> and then again. And then again. As you do this, you just see Hop, I'm presuming it's Hop, just looking at yeah. you, jumping around. And you just see his eyes squint. It's like... I'm also I see your game. I could beat that as you see him starting to leap up in the air. <laughs> what, what makes this uh, what makes this better is that my hood is like got rabbit ears attached to it, so it's kind of funny. Uh, <laughs> so yeah, I just so yeah, around. you don't have to roll with that one. You've persuaded them very easily. Okay, <laughs> play into their strengths, people. Play into their strengths. <laughs> He seems to like be jumping around, and at the end, he, um, when you eventually stop, he's like jumping side to side. You didn't mention which colour Hop was. All of the others you did, but not Hop. Oh, sorry. Hop is the brother of Tiny Terry, so he's got the same uh, colour palette. Okay. Oh, you did mention that. Sorry, I didn't write it down. That's all right. Just the opposite way around. It's grey and white. Right, you got so Tiny Terry and Mr. Neverember. Your choice, Lyle. <laughs> Lyle is looking at everybody else, like just walking up and easily, like sort of uh, connecting, like sort of with their axe beaks. And he's kind of like standing there, twiddling his thumbs, not really knowing what to do. And he's looking over at the ones that haven't been chosen. And uh, he's going to very gingerly, like, sort of. Um, make his way over to Tiny Terry and sort of um, he'll walk up to the side of him and sort of very slowly and very gently sort of start stroking through his feathers with one of his hands and then like sort of offering his other hand, his right hand uh, to his beak to see if he's receptive, but he's being very gentle with him. Okay, can you roll me an animal handling, please? That's a 10. (laughs) That's a 10, is it? Yeah. All right, so you're very careful putting your hand through the feathers And you put your hand closer to the beak and you just see it look over to you and then bite the hand. (laughs) Ah! 
mother. Ah, <laughs> uh, I probably forgot to say that one's very easily angered. Seriously? What the hell's wrong with uh Um, uh, that would be five points of damage to you. Okay. Uh, and you have a very interesting little curved mark on your hands now. Oh no, he's turning into a wear axe pig. <laughs> 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 uh, okay. You gonna try again, or? Um. So I'm just giving giving it some fault. If he's competitive, um, stand your fucking ground. Yeah, true. Larkin's gonna Larkin's gonna give Lyle a couple of pointers as that. So remember, don't look it in the eyes. They like it if you have food. And never feed it after midnight. Um, <laughs> and rem remember, remember, you need to you need to be strong. You need to be confident. They smell fair. He's going to um. <laughs> Interesting wording. Looking at his hand, uh, he's going to face it towards him and sort of try and get him to heal and sort of, sort of almost, in a way, sort of dare him to strike him again, like sort of trying to assert a little bit of uh, force or dominance over him. Sort of give him like sort of a, without looking at, directly at his face, like sort of give him like sort of a, side eye like sort of glare for him to like sort of you better fucking stop this now okay <laughs> roll me another check then <laughs> everybody else having fun with their new axe picks <laughs> lyle in mental <laughs> mental combat with his axe pick. <laughs> that's a night that's a 19 a 19 yeah you actually see um as you're doing this the axe speak like looks at uh looks at you Refuses to heal you, but just gives you a nod of acceptance. Good. Sort of just nods. Nods his head without even looking at the axe beak at the moment. He then puts his head, looks his head away, just like the rest of them. Pretending he did not just accept you. <laughs> <laughs> Funny Terry sounds like my dad. Okay. Uh, and Nova didn't do too bad with Mr. Neverember. Question. How tall are the axe picks? Ah, very good question. Very good question. Let's see. I know they are large creatures, even Tiny Terry. Tiny Terry is just slightly smaller than the others. Mm. Uh, I say from the top, they're a bit taller than horses. Okay. <laughs> so you would have to like hop up onto their backs or in uh, Lyle's case literally stretch by your body yeah yeah well you're given like a step I guess like a little mini step ladder to the saddle <laughs> <laughs> so you get to actually climb up oh boy. Uh, just, just little notes as well uh, these are obviously uh, travelling axe beaks uh, try not to just rush them into combat. They will probably see that they are in danger and probably run away. Uh, unless they are in no other options, then they're like a you know a rat in a corner. They'll fight back, but with open spaces, they'll run. Anyway, they are yours now. Good luck. Uh, here is some free food for them all. Yes, Ch Chow's one's bigger. <laughs> you kind of see everyone gets like a regular size bag and uh, and Narf gets like a suitcase <laughs> hopefully it's got a padlock on it because otherwise that axe beak is getting in there <laughs> oh it's got it's got a lock system on it <laughs> here's the key to it he's not figured out how to use the key yet but just to be safe don't open it in front of him that's quite smart. I remember to do that. Assuming, assuming the axe beaks are like apparently horses are about five feet tall on average. So assuming these are a little bit taller, so about six feet. 
That's about six sound feet right. tall. That, that feels too small. Yeah, that feels way too small. Like, I've, got a fake, I've got a fake horse outside and it's taller than me. <laughs> Don't um, question yeah, it. Callum Height how... reveal he's four foot tall. <laughs> How high, how high in, how high in feet would you say they are? How tall in feet? Uh, like six foot. Closer to seven. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, seven. from like feet all the way to head. Got to be easily six five, if that. All right. So according to our our good friend, the jump calculator. This. No, we're not doing that. No, no. <laughs> My literally no, it only no, jumps. No. Larkin, Larkin. Yeah. If you say anything else, <laughs> Hop will no longer be special. What? True. Hop okay, likes jumping. The rest of this away like. from me. <laughs> exactly. That's what he's doing. Stop it. I will, I will Bad larking. Bad larking. Uh, I... Behave. Or no <laughs> treats. <laughs> <laughs> so, you have your axe speaks now, everybody? Yep. Well, that was fun. Uh, you've been given the location, which is at a Kelvin Khan near the Dwarven Valley. Uh, question for how you would like to travel there? Axe Peak. By Axe Peak, yes, but you've got two directions you can go. You could either go down the paths, down to Care Dinaval, then Care Conic, then go f- across to the location. Or you can go from straight from Brian Shander across the wilderness to the location. Um, It'll take we'll... seven and a quarter hours to take the paths, but far, um, four and a half hours just straight. But obviously going straight is more dangerous. Well, at, at this point, I think danger isn't really one of our concerns considering what we're what we're planning to do so i think we should just go straight there but if we lose the axe beaks we'll lose a lot of time well um, we are on a bit of a time crunch not just with this but with you know the the big picture and all so i can see what larkin is saying especially considering we're going to run into danger anyway um but I'm happy to go either route, to be fair. Um, we'll still get there within a day, less than a day. Gives us plenty of time to also figure out exactly what we're going to do when we get there. Mm. Whatever you all think is great. I'm, I'm happy with going the fastest route. Um, do, do we know where uh, Dazan's circle is around here yeah. uh, I so, I can't remember to be fair you do remember where it is in Brian Shanza you also know East Haven and Bremen East Haven and Bremen right okay. Bremen not Bremen you dick uh, <laughs> okay I suppose you'd have to breathe to to get there <laughs> yeah yeah unless you're undead are you sure it's wise we take that we take the circle? I mean, surely we should save Narf's potential one and only use, um, just in case we, we, we get in trouble. We, we, we kind of informed the town master of the circles, and she wasn't too happy. I think that they, they might be disappearing soon. Yes, if, if we can use it, we might as well use it. I don't think it was a one and only time use. I think it was because we messed up. Uh, uh, oh, no, no, sorry. Uh, uh, the town master, we... um told her about the circles and she wasn't too happy with them because she doesn't want to Zan moving around. So I think she's going to do something to try to get rid of them. Oh. So, uh, yes. So we, oh, we probably best fun. to use. Yes. It's probably best if we do use the circle as much as we can, whilst we still can. Um, would we even be, would we even be able to fit the ax beats into the teleportation circle? And how would we know? Jump we... on top of them and then just, just jump in. a little she portal was. that we had to run through, didn't it? Yes. No man, do you um, do you have a good idea then what image it is uh to go towards um our destination? No. Hmm. Looks like we're taking the axe beaks then. <laughs> Thank you. Um. So which one are we currently at? We're at Brian Shander. Brian Shander. So that's Brinchander. the wheat or rye or I'm not sure what it's. 
Hold on, I wrote this down. I've got, I've, I've, I've got the two maps there. And so. it is the wheat. Yeah, and to get to it our destination, we have to go uh, far over no. to the Brighead Glacier, don't we? Uh, we want to uh, go no. We're going the opposite way. Oh! God, sorry. We're going so to uh, Kelvin's Cairn on the map? Yeah, okay. That's correct. So that's, if you look at the map, that's right near Care Conic, mm -hmm. which is just the picture of a single fish in the top right. Yeah. Yep. Okay. The uh, star, hang on. The if, star if, on the... if that's if that's Kerkenig, then Kerkenig is on this map is the is the end of the road. There's nothing else there. How comes there's like a connection between between the fish and something else? At least, or, or am I looking at the wrong thing? I mean, you'd have to ask to that. that. We know that the whale. Are you looking takes at the right fish? There's a lot of fish. Big awakens sperm yeah. whale. <laughs> That's gonna say there's a few fish. Um, do you mean do you mean the fish on the right or the fish on the left? I thought the fish at the top right. Okay. So the fish so... inside the circle, not the big whale. That's something else. What well, we did learn about the whale. Yes, we learned not about the whale. I, right. thought we, I thought right. it was the I thought it was the fish coming up to swallow something. No, that's Tamerlane. That's to your left. Or, okay. I guess, directly upwards in the picture. But it's meant to be... No, no, it is meant to be directly upwards. And then the star takes us to a place called Rebel's End. Okay, so I, I was... Yeah, the star is Rebel's End. Okay. I, just, I just thought, since they're so close together, that might have been the place we had to go to, considering it's, considering it's marked on, on our map. I assume it's commonly known. Mm. And, like, the Zan might have put a circle there. So we might be able to go straight there. So is, is that everyone saying that we're going to take the dangerous route? I think we should take the safer route and go on the axe beaks, but if majority... Decides... Oh, by the way, the times I told you was the halved times. With hmm. the axe beak, right, okay. Yeah, yeah, so literally, if you wasn't an axe beak, you'd be double those times. Got it. Got it. What were the times again, sir? So, just paths is seven and a quarter hours. Straight there is four and a half. Hmm. And the time I'm now is... We'll say it's still quite early. It's like nine o'clock. You got woken up early to have breakfast and go learn your axe picks. I'm with... <laughs> I'm with... Actually. I'm with Pastel on this one. Mm. I think we should take the safer route, but... Well, we wouldn't want anything to happen to our new friends now, would we? No. Is it true? We could then get acquainted with them as well. Yeah, I, actually, I'm, I'm changing my point of view. I think especially for the the first ride, we should probably be a bit safer. Um, just okay. so we can try and get used to them. But let's let's take the safer route then. Not to mention our healer looks distracted. <laughs> yes, yes. You see so, him still finishing off his breakfast. Are we going straight across or are we taking the road? I think we're taking the road. Yep, taking the road. Okay. Okay, so we're going for the seven to... and a quarter? Yes. Yeah. That'll get us there late afternoon, but it's fine. Hey, fair enough. So, you get onto your axe beaks for the first time. Some of them are a bit more difficult than others. Uh, and you set off onto a, surprisingly, not that snowy day, which is nice. Mm -hmm. uh, oh, before that, rewind. You look around Brian Shander and they start to be, you see people starting to get ready with decorations and whatnot. Okay, now you're going. Oh, the festival. festival uh, do yeah. we see Zook and Charlie and all that get there? Yeah, yeah, Zook and Charlie have got their ones. What are their ones like? Uh, Zook seems to have like this ash-coloured uh, axe beak, which has as much of an anger problem as Miles. <laughs> <laughs> makes sense. Uh, Just everything kicking. The you could say everywhere. he has a fiery personality. Yeah, was very it, much what, so. Was it the one that he kicked? <laughs> yes. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> Love that. <laughs> uh, and looks like Charlie has a very pure white looking one uh, that looks a little bit dopey, but in a nice, happy way. Not in a I can't think properly. Seven anyway. dwarves kind of way. Yeah, not like dopey for not the dwarves. Not in a drum kind of way. <laughs> Yeah! Yeah, nothing like drum. 
That wasn't supposed to be a compliment. <laughs> For Drum, it was. Anyway, with that, you go across the path. You see the little signpost that says which direction to go. You go left to Care de Naval. Have we been here this, before? We have not. You have never been to Care de Naval. No, never. I think we went this way, actually. Though. In fact, aside from East Haven, you've not been to anywhere on this right side of the map. Oh, jeez. Mm. It's, uh, <laughs> it's like going into Kanto in Gold and Silver. I think we've, I think we've been to, like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm. Mm. I, I, I think we've, we've been to some of these locations. Like you've only mean... been East Haven. Just East okay. Haven. Yeah, I was going to say, because haven't been good meads, Dugan Hole... Didn't even go to Red Water. Yeah, we we missed a lot of stuff. No, no, you're you're all West Side people. West Side yeah. representing. Anyway, West. you get to Care Dinaval, which, unlike most of the other towns you've seen, the people here look so much more depressed. <laughs> Jesus Christ! It's all right, we're used to that. <laughs> Yeah. I was going to say, it's like, that's not that different. Like, a lot of the people here look quite poor. Some of the people with their warm clothes look a bit uh, cut up. Uh, being old, I should say. Not um, mm. someone attacked them with a dagger. Uh, <laughs> except for one location, which does not look poor in the slightest. And it's well, it's namesake of this place it is the care. Uh, oh, actually, there's a picture in the Doesn't book. seem like they care very much at all for me. No, no, they don't. <laughs> Hold on. We'll see if we get this picture. It's a nice, it's a nice picture. It's a nice picture. Nice picture. Rick, very is nice. that you? Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a very nice picture. Just, here's the picture. Uh... What? Can you show you? Uh, uh... Come on, do the way. I there see. we go. There we go. There you see. There it is. That's the big building. Ooh! Mm. Holy fuck! It's like that a- looks quite nice. That's really pretty. Yeah. The- uh, compared to the rest of the place, though, it's the only nice-looking thing. <laughs> uh, those with a higher intelligence, so I guess enough. <laughs> and <Yay>. nobody else. <laughs> nobody else. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, would remember long, long ago from game three or maybe four when you was in the ramshackle and you went below and you found that book that was talking about the city of the moon. Part of yes. De Groot's journey was to that uh, to that exact location to meet a Valen Harpel, a member of the Arcane yes. Brotherhood. Oh, maybe we should stop by. What depends if Narfus told us this. I did show everyone the book. How many of you okay. read it? I don't remember. I know Nova did. Well, it's, it's you remembering. Yeah, Nova's being it? suspiciously quiet today. I was, <laughs> I was distracted by something in a mirror. Um, I didn't read it. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say there was a lot going on. <laughs> oh, also, while well, you're going through town, you see uh, what seems to be a ruined watchtower and a very, not very nice looking tavern. The window is not even there. Oh well, wow! Let's look. We can. Look, we we could go. We could go and visit this person on the way back, couldn't we? Enough. Uh, well, well, I, I, I suppose. Yes. Uh, yeah. Because I guess this probably is a bit more important. And then if we come back, because uh, she may know something of the city of the moon. I mean, it could come in quite handy. I mean, the place looks like a fortress. I don't think that she'd just let anybody just walk up to the door and be like, hi, we're so-and-so, can you let us in? So, Well, if, oh, we, yes. if, we, exp- if we explain about, uh, about the diary, I'm sure we can, uh, we can pique this person's interest. No, you probably didn't read the order of the diary, but uh, the group thought that he was being watched. And uh, she may have been one of the people that was watching him, and 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 and, and uh, you you know what happened to her, uh, the brute afterwards when she uh, thought he was being watched, and he uh, is a bit no more. Uh, yeah, uh, good, good so uh, should should best not mention the book actually. If we can uh, go in different pretenses, perhaps might be more useful. 
Mm. Oh, and just to give a little context about how many people you do see around here, Brian Chandler has a population of 1,200. Care de Naval has a population of 100. Oh, Christ, the... that's not very much. How, so, what's the population of Lonelywood? Of Lonelywood? I think that's rather close to that. I think it's like 150. Okay. And Bremen? Has he ever a small town we've been to? Bremen, I think, has 50. Oh, okay. Lonelywood has 100, sorry. So Lonelywood's the same kind of amount. But it doesn't have this giant thing on a hill saying... Hey, oh, damn, I'm here. wrong. Bremen has 150. Somewhere else has 50. Bremen has more people than here. I thought Bremen had more people. It sounded like it. <laughs> anyway, that was just a little uh, thing to say. Continue. Is there anyone outside? Uh... Or there is, there is a few people. Most people seem to be indoors, and the people walking about are kind of... Uh, they don't seem unfriendly, but mm -hmm. they're not in the mode to walk up to you and say, hello. Mm -hmm. They kind of try and stick to themselves. I know we've still got a little bit of a ways to go, but at this point, Lyle would probably be trying to look out for any of those sort of Durgar uh, that he's seen before and had um uh sort of contact with although obviously he, they didn't understand each other but okay oh and to get an idea of how much of the travel you've done so far you've done five and a quarter hours you got two more to go right. it's a very long journey to get to care dinner well, but <laughs> care connie's just is, around the corner is it a whale <laughs> Hmm. <laughs> is there anything yeah. <laughs> particular about the ruined watchtower as such that sort of stands out at all? Uh, you can take a little mini detour over to the ruined watchtower if you like. I probably would mention it to the other guys that I wanted to have a little look, hoping that no one minds. And um, Nova, would you, Nova, would you mind talking to me for a little bit? Uh, no. Not Nova, sorry, it wasn't Nova. Uh, Nomad, I should have said. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would have been awkward. That was yeah, I was I like, meant, uh, no, I'm not doing that. He's I got meant, bread in his mouth, he can't talk. I meant, um, I meant Nomad. <laughs> He's had bread in his mouth for um, fucking eight hours. Well, <laughs> Alright, we'll start with Lyle Nomad, and then we'll go over to Narf if anyone else is joining him as well. He he'll walk with you, but the, the first question out his mouth is why. Um, you... If I remember correctly, can speak Dwarvish, correct? Um, I I know enough. Yeah, I can speak it. I'm just thinking in terms of um, you know, our way in to this place. Perhaps uh, instead of being confrontational, perhaps with your way of speaking, a very good actor, very eloquent. Mm -hmm. Perhaps you'd be able to talk our way in. Yeah. So that was my thought process. The other thing is is that I've I've met some of these people before. I'm just wondering if they're even with my obviously changing appearance, if they're gonna realise who I am. That might be a bit of a problem. So that's fine. I'll, I'll, I can take the lead. That's no problem with me. Okay. Thank. Thank you. That's it. All right. So those who are with Narf, Narf, you get over to the uh, broken down watchtower. Uh, is there a picture, Ken Conig? Yeah. So see at the very bottom of the map, it says ruined watchtower. Uh huh. Oh, right next to that, you. completely frozen over lake. Which means they can't even fish. This place is just suffering after suffering. So, oh, oh, there's, there's, oh, there's oh. ice fishing, isn't there? There is, but it's not as effective as non-ice fishing. They don't have the tools yes. for it. They're too poor. <laughs> anyway, you get there. You see, it looks like it used to be a pretty classic, just cylinder tower going upwards. At least from the design at the bottom, it looks like it was. Don't know if there's any side to compartments at the top because it's all on the floor now. Uh, okay. Obviously. Is there any uh, issue? Yes. Oh, 
Is there any say, obviously it's covered of snow. Uh, you can roll me a history check if you like. I'd say with advantage, or you are from ten towns. Awesome. Okay, so that's a bit better. That is a fifth, fifteen. A fifteen. So, don't know if you know this. In fact, I'll take a little picture while I'm talking. But the emblem of Caer de Naval is a castle, or perhaps a watchtower, with a fish underneath. Mm -hmm. So, uh, that emblem is what Caer de Naval used to be. It used to be great at the fishing town. It got to have a watch over to the waters itself. It was almost like a public symbol. Like when they created that tower, that's when this place was made. Mm. Mm. Uh, but for whatever reason, one day a bolt of lightning fired out and uh, basically obliterated the tower. And it's unknown to why. At least to your knowledge. We can all hazard a guess. Maybe it has something to do with a certain wizard. Possibly. That's the emblem. Oh, very nice. A lot like most towns, it was a fishing town. So obviously their tower was destroyed and the waters were frozen over and then it was, oh, great. Uh, the would rich I know person how long ago this all happened taxes. as such? <laughs> uh, how long ago? It was before your time. Like, this was before all real was a thing. Okay. Oh, okay. The Does it look like there's sort of any way to get inside this tower? Uh, you can literally, literally just... step over the bit of rubble at the top and you'll be inside. Oh, it's... Oh, because it's, it's literally that, that, that far down. down, it's destroyed. Oh, okay. Hmm. Oh. Awkward. North might <laughs> still just have a sort of look around anyway. Have a rummage for the rubble. Oh, and that's another little bit of information. The tower was also used as a greater trade service with East Haven as they were would have boats travel down to East Haven and go back. Oh. But, you know, the water's froze over. They can ski. Not great for business, really, is it? Not really. Bob Slay between the two things? <laughs> Are you, I think that's a business idea right there, Narf. You might have to... <laughs> I would say go and tell the town, town speaker, but he's not been seen for a while. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Interesting. Uh, he says he's too sick to come out to the public. He's been saying that for a year. Stop dangling extra quests in front of us. Yep. <laughs> hey, you live here, so you know a lot. I mean, true, we, true. We're going to need to come back here. Even, even Larkin knows that one. <laughs> Thanks! <laughs> <laughs> uh. So yeah, there we go. Okay, that's pretty cool. That's quite nice. Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, sorry for the little detour, guys. I just, uh, history is quite interesting. And I just wanted to have a little look around. There's uh, apparently some big magical bolt or something ruined this place. So I just wondered what became of it. We're definitely going to need to come back here uh, like after mm -hmm. we've, uh, we've cleared some things out of the way first. Yeah, that, that sounds like a good plan to me, yes. yes you know what's definitely. funny to me, like, out of character real quick? I've mm. got I've got history pers uh, proficiency despite being less than a year old. <laughs> 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 well, you Maybe got extremely good memory, but you only remember a year's worth of stuff. Yeah. Maybe it's like the opposite dog years, your one year is of seven hour years. Possibly. I, mean... I think just on the travels, you always got kicked out of town as you stayed in the library for too long. <laughs> if you're constantly like, absorbing the passive thoughts of the people around you, like even walking into a room is like immediately reading a novel. Oh, I like that. That's yeah, pretty cool. Kind of a little intrusive, that, though. That also means you know stuff that you really wish you didn't. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like what Nos dad got. No up wonder to. I'm a nervous oh, wreck. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I know all about Nos, Nos dad's fetish. 
<laughs> he likes him green. <laughs> How he loves he to be called mostly. Outlander. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, anyway. Uh, Narf had to cover his eyes when he watched Shrek for the first time. <laughs> <laughs> what are we doing? What are we doing? I don't know. We're, we're supposed to be moving on, aren't we? Yeah, we're we're moving on to uh, to the town, to the next town, or to uh, the place yes. we're supposed to be. To uh, yeah. Care Conic. Yes, Care Conic. Yeah. Care So uh, this place has a similar name to. Yes. You saying stuff, no, Matt? No, it's no, no. Conic. I was just. Yeah. Oh. Everyone was saying the name, so I joined in. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Like the Bit Connect guy. <laughs> so, you go off to Care Conic. Doesn't take crazy long. Uh, only takes you a little under an hour. Like. Their names are very similar. They're very close by. Hmm. Uh, and as you get there, unlike Care de Naval, this place, we're still very low in population. Uh, the people here seem a bit more cheerful. Uh, but as you do go through the town, <clears throat> uh, you do notice there's a lot of people seemingly training. Uh, and those who are good at fighting up front would note they are not that great. They are not proficient in what they are doing whatsoever. Oh, no, we need to You're help hearing people. a lot of the sword of link sounds. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to walk up to one and be like excuse me uh, is, is there a reason you're, you're training or are you just is, is, is anything about to happen? Have you not read the newspaper? Yes, there is something that is about to happen. Torva uh, said that we are going to battle soon, and we must prepare ourselves, otherwise it would be the destruction of our town. Okay, uh, destruction by, like, I, I, I don't really read the newspaper. Destruction by what? Uh, well, he, he didn't really specifically say, he just said there's something happening. You see the guy who's not taking it as seriously just comes over and says, he's drunk a lot. This is probably just drills for nothing. No, it is for something. Have a bit of faith in our town speaker. Yes, as soon as he's sober, I'll have faith in him. <laughs> nice. Listen, there's something that's going to attack us and we have to be prepared. I am not having my family get killed by whatever it is. Uh... Which pa Sorry, which page people? was this on, by the way, Callum? Hmm? Do you remember which page this thing was on from the newspaper? Uh, not particularly. Okay, I'll have, I'll, have, I'll have a flicker through it. It was one of the side things. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for Welsh. <laughs> <laughs> I was just interested in what it might have meant. Because they've got uh... a ring one. And I was like... Oh, that's interesting. Interesting oh, to me. Fair enough, fair enough. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I should probably say the port town here is also got a frozen over lake. Not amazing. However, there is a portion of it that you see not far out that seems to not be frozen over. Uh, and a lot of them seem to travel across. Or at least you see some people traveling across to go fish there as if that was the end of the landmass. So they're doing a bit better for food and whatnot. Oh, okay. It's the uh, the one the the article in the in the, in the yeah. in the top left of the page of the page I posted. No oh, noise. I have I have to admit, Clark. Forgive me for saying this in front of you, um, local townspeople, but uh, I am curious to uh, know what this unknown unseeable force that this town speaker seems to think that is going to ravage the town. It's very interesting. <laughs> Hello? Yeah, no, yeah one, one second. <laughs> one second the for town speaker just All right, just moving like... swiftly on. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, uh... Lark is just ignoring Lyle. Lyle's, yes, yes. Lyle's, 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 
Niall's just gonna walk off. Fine. <laughs> you don't wanna talk to me? Fine. No, no. Like, like, uh, well, Niall, according to according Niall, to the newspaper, not really. It, like, many other people don't believe it as well. It's too late. Lars already walked off. Okay. Don't walk away from there. <laughs> Jesus. That's weird. The passion in the Just don't walk away from me, I think, is what got me there, to be honest. Um, okay, so. Uh, that happens. Yep. Is hook, line, and sinker a tavern or a fish bait shop? The hook, line, and sinker is a tavern. Lof is so tempted to stop off, but he knows he can't. <laughs> I'm gonna see Narf's anguish and just send him a, a little a little private message and just be like, I'll slow them down. You just see his eyes light up. <laughs> he just feeds Cho a bit and charges towards <laughs> Zoom. All right. As soon as he goes over to get a drink, uh, I don't necessarily want to narrate it because I feel like it'd be very boring to listen to. <laughs> Nomad's just gonna try and like tell everyone a story, just talk to people, and like try and draw them in, and over time slow his pace on Crystal. <laughs> <laughs> so he has there plenty was of time long, to get a drink long ago back. back in my mm. youth so back when I was uh, growing up on the boats um, we were sailing and the waves were really cool all the time just, just slowing down slowing down I wasn't very good at many things but I really like maps I got taught how to make maps you see just um, like Freya rolling her eyes <laughs> and it's to All that right. effect <laughs> our story begins in the early 18th mm. century <laughs> waiting for Noel to get back <laughs> Excalibur while uh, while, while Nath's heading to the hook line and sinker where uh, I'm, I'll, Larkin's going to quickly uh, see if he can head over to the town speaker's house. You're going to go to the town speaker's house? Yes. Okay, is anyone else going to town speaker's house, or is the rest of you listening to Nomad Song? Uh, La will come with him. Oh, now that he, La will come with him now that he feels like Larkin actually was paying attention to what he was saying. So, okay. I just fell asleep on her axe peak. <laughs> <laughs> the gentle, yeah, like ju- like the gentle hopping motion feels like a baby's crib. <laughs> oh, that's so wholesome. And also, right, so we'll start off at the. Uh... <laughs> we'll start off at the uh, hook, line, and sinker. Then with Narf. Okay, so Narf, so... you rush over to the hook, line, and sinker. I sort of come in. Uh, how busy is the tavern? Uh, currently, it seems to be not too busy, but uh, you get a feeling that this time of the day, it's going to start picking up. Okay. I will make my way to the bar. As you get to the bar, you see uh, a very well-dressed half-elf in almost like a suit, like a tire. Tie, mm-hmm. all nicely done with like stars across it. Dark blue with white stars, I should say. Ooh. He just looks over to you and is like, Ah, hello there, sir. You're a new one. I see you've even got yourself a, your own type of axe beak at the back there that I hope you left there and did walk in with. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I tried him up by the door. He'd be fine. I put some food on the floor for him. He'll, he'll, he'll be chowing down for a little bit. <laughs> yeah, his head is not popped up above the window yet. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Sorry, my, my name's North. I'm from a terminal line. I've never ventured this far. East, west, damn it, which way have we gone? East. East. Never ventured this far east before. I uh, thought I'd pop in here before I carried on going and uh, grab a little drink to wet my whistle. Oh, excellent. Well, as a new customer of the day, that means you kind of see him pour out half a glass of mead. Everyone that comes to the His Tavern for the first time gets a free half pint of mead. Here you go. 
Oh, thank you very much. Or would you prefer ale? I'd prefer to the meat. The meat, 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 very nice, thank you. Yes, I, I like the meat. Okay. You kind of like, as you start drinking now, you hear it just under his breath a little bit, hook, line. Um, uh, uh, yes, it's a, it's a nice little town you've got here. I see you're all uh, preparing for the um, inevitable force of evil or something. Yeah, some course. kind of battle. Yes. Uh, uh, did, did, did you know much about it? What, what, what What's going on in such of... Sort of no, no, not in the there. slightest. So I think it's our town speaker having another drunk escapade somewhere. Uh, Honestly, and you kind of see him go a little bit closer into you. Oh, yes, yes. If it was really that serious, I think he would give up on a bit of his pride and ask for help from other towns. I don't know if you know this about this place, but we do. We feel most people here feel abandoned from the rest. Oh, really? However, That's... that was also over a hundred years ago. People should get over it. Yes, yes, it's... I'm from I'm from Goodmead, by the way. So. <laughs> oh, okay. That's, that's that's good to know. That explains the good. You see, who know about your mead? <laughs> <laughs> and what can I say? I get a discount. Yes, yes, yes. This is very Which good, is helpful very right now because, whew, they went up in price ever since that giant attacked them. Yes, yes, yes. I heard about that. Was a. I was going to try to look into it, but uh, some friends of mine dealt with it, apparently. So that's, that's, that's quite good. I don't know if that means oh, well, this good. far yet, no, or not. But yes, yes. You know, Charlie and Zook, then? Yes, yes, yes. Quite a good friend for them, actually. Yes, yes, I am. Ah, well, if you meet them, please tell them that Elgendar... Actually, just call me Glenn. Please tell them that Glenn appreciates your efforts. I, I, I most certainly will, Glenn. Don't you worry about that at all. Now, uh, I, I might grab another drink and then I should probably head off because I've uh, got some important business to do myself. You kind of see him like put his hands up as like, of course, of course, don't want to keep you too busy. Uh, easy. No, 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 you get fine. whichever one you want, say how much she's spending. He'll, he'll just get a full pint of mead, screw it, why not? Yeah, okay. We'll say it takes off like a couple silver or something. Cool. You get it in a takeaway cup. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he gets a takeaway cup with a straw. <laughs> and it's just got Not written just on it. it out the <laughs> <laughs> anyway, those going to town speaker. Mm-hmm. Takes a little while to find it, but eventually you do find the location of the town speaker. He seems to proudly have the symbol of Care Conig's emblem right outside of his house. Uh, the house doesn't seem too big. Uh, it's around the same kind of wealth you'd imagine from Lonelywood. Mm. Uh, so richer than most people in the town, but nothing compared to lower down people in Brian Chander. Okay. Um, La will walk up to the door and sort of... Um knock a couple of times see if there's an answer you you try and get the information i i'll i will try and tell whether he's lying or not okay uh as you knock on the door you hear like this uh like someone almost fell off a sofa okay so he's definitely definitely been drinking fucking hopper from stranger Uh, things oh oh, who's that um may we come in we read the uh, article from the newspaper. Uh, we wanted to see if we could perhaps help you with your problem. You know, it's all no, no, no. Care Conig is an independent town place. Ugh. You kind of, you feel, you hear like a stumbling going to the door. We are independent. When I was young, I did not accept any help because I was that great. So you see the door finally open up, and to your surprise, it's not a what you was expecting, like a human or an elf. It seems to be a dragonborn, a silver dragonborn, to be exact. Hmm. Ooh. Interesting. Uh, Larkin, you would remember that this guy was apparently an ex-adventurer in his youth. Uh, apparently, won over the town and eventually became town speaker. Okay. And looking at him, yeah, he he's drunk. 
I mean, like he's, I... He's, he's holding on to the door and he slowly looks like he's going down, but keeping his head up. <laughs> Niall is very tempted to comment about his drinking, but he'll keep it together. I am. Um, I understand you're a prideful man, and this is obviously a town that is full of pride. There's a lot of people that are training for uh, its defense, but surely um, having one or two other men to help you wouldn't hurt. Oops, shit, you're in the Right? No, no. If no, like you collate no. music, they're just played on stream. What are, you, what are you even training for anyway? I mean, what could attack you? Uh, the here? destruction of Care Conig! Yeah, you see him shout out. Destruction from what? The evil mistress. Evil Does mistress. Does mistress have a name? Hold on one second, Larkin. Uh, it starts with a B. It's a uh, bitch. She's a bitch. <laughs> fucking bitch. What, what did she look like or what is her oh uh, she looks like a woman and there was almost i think there were three of her but i can't remember if that was me at the time or not i like to have a little bit of a drink sometimes hmm well if there were she three a... of well if there were three of them could you tell the difference between them Ah, uh, they were all women. They all had a name known as bitch. Does the, does the name oh, Shira... I think... Does oh, the name I think Shira, I feel good. I need a drink. Does this name Shira mean anything to you? Shara? Uh, Lyle will, talk to, uh, will turn around to Larkin. Yeah, this guy's out of his fucking mind. Sorry, see you. La walks off. <laughs> okay. Goodbye, little man. <laughs> don't call me Don't call me little. Oh damn. Those two speak very quickly at the same time. <laughs> you see him uh, almost shut the door. <laughs> Okay. Uh, okay, so, Nomad, what was the end of your story? <laughs> so anyway, when I was taught to um, make these um, maps, I just I started doodling in little pictures, and that's why I'm so good at doing drawings, because <laughs> everywhere where I've been, um, I've, I've had to do little drawings, so that's why my map's so, like, colourful. I'm at a complete stop at this point. We're, like, maybe 20 <laughs> paces outside of the town. And I'm just not moving. <laughs> the off suddenly catches up. Sure, great story. I, I, I did always enjoy your, your little maps. They were very nice, yes. yes. Thank you, Nath. <laughs> um, I'm glad you enjoyed it. I did. It was a very interesting story, yes. Um, yeah, so uh, we we found out about the town speaker. Um, definitely drunk. Uh, his story. No, I hide his beer. He was an absolute mess, a former shell of himself, it looks like. Like his his story, in my opinion, may have may have a bit of merit, considering uh, you said you said the uh, the the city of the moon was kind of like around here or like off in kind of like that direction didn't you it's very far east yes yes yeah very far east towards the glacier yeah uh, the oh. red uh, got the names there somewhere too redhead so redhead glacier when um That's the one yes when he, men yeah. when he mentioned it was one of three women I thought he was talking about the uh, Moon Sisters, but then when I mentioned one of them, he had no fucking idea what I was talking about. So, yeah, he's just a old drunkard. Well, we know we know she's definitely planning something, and I think it's I... tales of a madman. Honestly, I think he's just out off his rocker. Well, if if she is planning the destruction of ten towns. Surely this would be one of the first places she would do it, considering this would be the closest town to the glacier. 
So I mean, sure. It, it would mean less travel. Sure, by our logic, that is correct. But you heard that man; he made no sense at all. A lot of things don't make sense. Like you need to, you need to. Some, some of it may be truth. Some of it may be lies. Or it might be complete. Uh, it might be. It, all there lies, is. But... There are certainly mysteries when it comes to magic and it comes to certain deities and gods, but normally they're not under the influence, Larkin. I don't know. Like, there's, there's, there's a few gods out there that I'm not that kind of question. Anyway, yeah. let's, uh, let's get going. All right. Uh, but you know what isn't a mystery? Is me wanting to go make myself a cup of tea. So let's go. <laughs> right. All right. Ready? <laughs>
for Bobby. Hello there, everybody. Hello there, everybody. Hello there, everybody.
everybody. Hello there, everybody. Hello there, everybody.
everybody. Hello there, everybody. Hello there, everybody. And we're back. <laughs> Sad paper. <laughs> sad paper, apparently. Oh dear. Paper of sand. All right, sand I'm, make, I'm making paper. more visual notes. So here's some sand. Yes, yes. However, what you see in front of you is not sand. Sand plus paper. Uh, but plus what you do lake. see uh, as you get up to what is known as Kelvin Khan, which I also call as big as a hill can be before it's considered a mountain. Got it. Fair. I like it. Uh, you seem to be travelling upwards, following a stream by the instructions you were given, which seems to apparently go straight to the fortress itself or the stronghold. Uh, as you're starting to see it in the distance, first of all, you see two rather big stone doors at the very end. That's where the blue arrow is. Mm -hmm. And a bit further down, there seems to be like a small bunker that seems to be completely covered in snow. Uh, and it if you look carefully, there's like little arrow slits. How big is that stream? And is it frozen over? Uh, it is frozen over, but with the keener eye, you can see there's still water going underneath it. Uh, and it's about five foot wide. Oh, okay. Interesting, interesting. A little, little less than five foot wide at some places, but mostly. Uh, we'll say you're just at the bottom of the map, not quite close up yet. Let me get this up on screen. And don't worry, this is the only one that has drawing on it. The rest are completely drawing free. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we like the drawings. 
Okay. You said that there was arrow holes by where the bunker is? Yeah, like little arrow slits. Hmm, okay. Uh, can I spot any, like, any, any, uh, dwarves or draugr or whatever the hell they're called there hiding there. nearby, or perhaps That's hanging around? Cool <laughs> yeah, I keep saying the Skyrim thing, I know he does. Uh, you can roll me a perception oh. check if you like to have a little look. Oh, I got it. 25. 25, okay. So, you don't see anyone outside. However, you do notice, just through the little arrow slits, you think you see what seems to be a portion of a beard. So, there's at least one in that bunker. Okay. Um, I'm going to I'm going to crouch down and like point that out to everybody else and tell them to like be careful, don't let him see you. Like there's 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 a guy literally right right in there. Are we particularly hidden, being on our axe peaks, walking up in snow? Not in the slightest. Um, I think it's fair to say that if you've seen him in his cover, he's probably seen us. Good point. Well, what do we do? We can't just, like, run up and be like, hey, we're here to blah de blah de blah please let us in. <laughs> we, 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 we could just go up and talk to her. Are we there yet? They don't know why we're here. Call, call this a crazy idea, but if... Um, if some of them may have seen me on my travels, because I did run into some of them. Perhaps a way in or something to talk about and you'd have to translate for me, Nomad, is I could say my old crystal was broken and I'm looking for a way to remake it. Yeah. We can most definitely do that, see if they've got some sort of way. If they're um, connected to... Uh... Shay, Sh not Sha, Sh Sh Shira, the bitch, Shira, that's it. Shira, um, the bitch. I mean, I mean, bitch will do as well. So, um, uh, is it is this what you were sort of thinking of before, like Lyle? As a potential idea, yes. If nobody's got anything better, you could act per perhaps as my interpreter. Okay. Did, did they seem very aggressive last time you saw them? No, the opposite. They were very friendly. Um, they kept pointing at my crystal, speaking in Dwarvish, but I couldn't understand them because I can only speak halfling and common. So. Huh. Well, if, if they seem friendly, I guess, suppose if we just sort of go and introduce ourselves, things might turn out well for us. Perhaps. The only, the only thing. The only backfire I can think of, though, is if if so, if any of them have a direct connection to Shira, maybe they would have been told that I've broken contact with her and that she's looking to have me killed for it, kind of like when she told me that she wanted me to kill Ravison. So. True. But uh, they have a big bunker with uh, arrow slits and we haven't been shot at yet. I would assume if they'd have the upper hand, we are on no. big things that kind of stick out in colours. Yeah. Do we have, like, a image or, like, a depiction of Shira that we could use? Uh, um, no. No, because every, um, every time there was a dream that Lyle had, uh, Shira would talk to him as if she was either behind him or, like, all around him, he never. Uh, Lyle never saw he, uh, her face or what she looked like. What What did Lyle's crystal used to look like? It was a red. It was a red crystal. And now it's just what dull. No, it's completely it's turned to dust. It's turned, it's turned to dust. Remember, because um, yeah, Nova shot it. Nova <laughs> shot a it. laser gun. Oh fuck yeah! I forgot about Nova that. shrugs shoulders as he finishes off his bread. Um, How much food has he got? How much Cho not attacking him? Nova. Nova, <laughs> don't eat too much. You'll end up getting fat and you won't be able to fight Shira. Then it'll be Supernova. <laughs> 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 uh, 
Uh, um, well, we can approach them and ask, and I can try and talk to them. I can't Unless... think of it. If someone's got a better idea, please say, because this could go horribly wrong. But um, Well, I can't speak Dwarvish, but perhaps this is one of those moments where my shape-changing nature might come in handy. Mm. Yeah. Well... Let's let's do what we do best. Let's go in, improvise, and then see what we can find out. I keep spilling coke on myself. God damn it! I'm <laughs> hoping you mean a delicious Coca Cola. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not going to waste that much money on myself. God. Uh, so, uh, uh, are we going to the doors or the bunker? Uh, I I assume we're saying hello to the doors. So we could perhaps try and talk our way in. Are you uh, still the dwarf at the bunker? Yeah. Oh uh, yes. The question I, mean, I have: Are you still on your axe beaks as you walk over, or are you attaching the axe beaks somewhere? Um, good question. Is there oh, anywhere to attach the axe beaks? Is probably a question. Uh, you was given with your little axe beak kit, like a little post a you can put that. in. Okay. Um. <laughs> I might approach on my axe beak, and then we can, like, pitch it up by the door. No, because if, we, if we, we might get, like, they may not even want to talk, we might get attacked, so it's best off leaving them away. Sure. I mean, if they've got slits in the walls, that means they've got arrows, so I, d I don't think if it makes a difference if we hitch our axe beaks here or there. Either way, they'll still be able to shoot us. Well, depending on what arrows they have, like, like, well, and what, what bows they I should they probably have, say, they're... Larkin just has ridiculous abilities to see things. You're far enough away oh, that they probably right. don't even know you're there yet. Oh, okay. Oh. Oh. And let's hitch these bitches up. Hmm. Yeah. I wouldn't just put you in a location so they see you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I was going to say, we're just standing there chatting, and the duo guys are like, look at these people do it. Oh, so, so I can't... <laughs> <laughs> so I can pull, so I can pull, pull a leg less and be like, Larkin, what do you see with your shifter eyes? I mean, you get ask cocky yourself now. that. <laughs> he talks in the third person. That's yeah. a good point. The fuck? He gets Freya to bark at him and ask. Him. Anyway, that's the situation. Larkin is channeling okay. uh, in his inner battle. Actually, you know what? That is ridiculous. <laughs> you just smelt what seems to be some kind of stew. S mm. An old stew that seems to still be on the beard. Mm. <laughs> and that's how you know there's something there. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, wow. Okay. Wow, that's unique. So, yeah, Lyle will probably hitch his uh, axe book there in that regards. Um, yeah. start, slowly yeah. walk start slowly walking on over, hoping that Nomad will. Yeah, Lacey, do you want to come as a as a Duraga or? Uh, I, if you want. What will you do if they start talking to you in Dorvish? I don't know. Oh. Wait. Well, I'll, I'll I could go I could detect thoughts on Nomad and then repeat it if he'll let me. Yeah. Now this is improvisation. Or Mm. Or <laughs> he could just do his mental connection thing, but yes. Yeah, yeah. What? Both of them. I don't know that was a thing. What? I can All the things. private message wow. someone in the brain. I can essentially just tell you what they said and then Got it. tell you back what you should say. I'm not sure um, how uh, Duragar will respond to a shifter in amongst their mids, but just in case I do need to use it. Uh, Larkin has got his green cloak on with like him, with like his his mask on and the hood up. So like all like all they could see is pretty much like his 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 eyes. Okay, that doesn't look shifty. So mm. is it fair to say that you've all attached your axe peak to a handy handy yeah. axe peak location mm. location? Yes. yes. Maybe Nova standing watch are... over him. What um just out of game just to remind remind me guys um what was what's the um type of metal called because I keep forgetting uh, Shardin 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 mm. 
Charladin. Uh, Charladin, got it. The uh, Charcha squad. We do actually but have some, uh, some Charladin, which is my arrows. I... Um... Safe to assume that the dwarves are probably immune to that. Yeah. Mm. Um, I might add, uh, if we would hide um, Nova, if you'd hide your depictions of um, Saloon, uh, so, you know, we're not... Nova finishing that. off his bread, getting another loaf in there, puts his hired to symbol. Damn, <laughs> my boy Carbon up. So <laughs> <laughs> uh, you don't understand, this is a um, this is a saloon holiday today. We got five loaves of bread <laughs> for five days, and he's just eaten four of them in 40 minutes. <laughs> this is I think Carbon up is going for a run One tomorrow. bite is enough to fill the, a man's stomach for seven uh, days. How many did you eat? Four. <laughs> uh, uh, Lyle, uh, the old rub. The um, that that's how I've got Shaladin spelled in D and D Beyond. I'm not sure if it's right, but that's how I've got it spelled. Okay, thanks. Looks good. All right. This is how it's spelled. So we're all approaching then. Yes, I'm assuming so. Uh, yeah. All approaching just the bunker, or are you just going to the main doors? Uh, I'd say we'd, we'd, we'd be better approaching the bunker because we know that people are in the bunker. Um, I, I feel like probably going towards the main doors. Uh, but as we go, um, knowing that the Duragar are there, I'd like to just raise my hand up and create a large five foot by five foot by five foot minor illusion of what Lyle's crystal used to look like. Nice. What, a five foot big like one? a huge one. And I'd just like to show it... Bigger than Lyle himself. Until they actually, like, see us. Yeah, it's bigger than Lyle I'll, itself. <laughs> and I'll remove it and carry on walking. Almost like a kind of showing a flag before you hmm. like, come into harbour. Uh, Lyle, okay. Lyle in um, Lyle along with that will sort of uh, sort of motion his head like towards it and like sort of give like a sort of a little nod towards uh, the Duragar that he sees as a, like sort of an acknowledgement of like I know about the material and etc. Without saying it, I can't speak mm. Gaulish. You kind of see like the Duragar kind of looking out to all of you doing these little magic tricks. You just see him duck down. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, Larkin, Larkin is currently walking with with like his hands like clearly visible, so they don't think he's holding like he's hiding anything or he isn't. Oh, so he, so he doesn't look like he's look like he's holding any weapons or anything else like that. Oh, okay. Um... Everyone get ready because we're either about to be shot at or they're going to talk to us. All right. Let's okay, go. so as you um continue going uphill to the main two stone doors, which seem to be they seem to be ten foot high, which is double the size that a dwarf needs. Mm -hmm. uh, they seem to have no real fancy markings any uh, at all. Uh, although you do get the feeling they're meant to be push, not pull. Uh, and as you get closer to you hear like this cranking noise. And to eventually hear a boom. And then it goes silent. Hmm. Uh, the doors open, or is that just The a... doors did not open. You heard something behind the door. <clears throat> Um, where the door is, um, are there any sort of like, uh, like, are there like, um, what's the term I'm trying to look, uh, listen to, you know, uh, look for, you know, when you have people that are like walking, uh, walking across like the top of walls and stuff, do we see any like sort of Duragar like overlooking, uh, from above us? Apparently. Aside from this door, you wouldn't even think this is a place there'll be people living. It just looks like the cliffside or the hillside. Okay, fair enough. All right. 
Um, I'd like to push on the door. Okay. Oh, I'm going to no, I'm going to I'm going to create a mage hand to push on the door. Okay. So you yeah. attempt to try and push it with the mage hand, but it seems mm. a bit too strong to move by a mage hand. Okay. All right. Then I'll go up and try. Okay. Um... You want to try and push the door? Mm hmm. Can you use can you use mage hand to knock, like sort of do a knocking sound? Because La would probably use his mage hand, which instead of it being red now would be like a spectral, like sort of moonlight color, to like sort of knock on the door, see if anybody answers. Does that make sense or not? To knock on the door. Yeah. I right, mean, you can knock on the door if you like. With a mage hand? Yeah, that's what I wanted to do. Knock, knock, knock. And step back. It's made of rock, rock, rock. So it makes a rocky kind of knock, knock, knock. Because oh, yeah. it is rock, rock, rock. You don't what get any response. Uh, but I'm those with higher passive way. perceptions, which would be Larking and Nova, who is now chewing intensely. Uh, Where did he get that other fucking loaf of bread from? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you start hearing almost like maybe like a cage sound mm -hmm. like something's being unlocked inside uh does it sound like it's going up or going down it looks like it's the same level as you i'm gonna okay. take a few steps back okay. and to the side a cage a cage that's been unlocked correct yes uh oh, that's what it sounds back. like i will step back a little bit and summon board in preparation for something because he's thinking okay these people might be I, looking to attack I, now i think they're releasing something yeah might just be might just be the portcullis no something um, tells me it's not a portcullis no i will actually take note of what nomad is doing and will also step to the side opposite nomad i see who's second on the discord nomad Hello. So from behind you, you mm. see this bolt f fly out towards you, but oh. just misses you as it hits you. Well, it doesn't hit you. It lands right next to your feet. As you see, the guy in the bunker seems to have a crossbow out. <laughs> right. Okay. Bolt, right. Well, this is okay. a fine. How do you do? Uh, well, Nomad's then going to look over towards the tower. Um. How far bunker. away? The, bu uh, the bunker, sorry. How far away is this person? The bunker is, let's see, from the front door, it would be 10, 20, 30, 40, about 50 foot away. Um, and do I... I see them, yeah? Just. Uh, so I would like to use telepathic speech. And I'm going to speak into their mind and in uh, Dwarvish say, open the doors or you'll live to regret it. You just hear in your head uh, in Dwarvish, leave now or you're going to have an arrow in the knee. <laughs> Okay. Every being of me wants to stand you there. You then hear just... in your head as he corrects himself, bolt, bolt in the knee. I have bolt. to <laughs> Damn, he can talk via minds as well. <laughs> um, uh, they're not being very receptive. Uh, they're going to keep shooting at us if we stay. Would you like me to try? Uh, third person, late uh, pastel. Let's see if this one hits you. Okay. This guy's got shit aim, so that one hits the sides right on the door. No, doesn't hit you. I was gonna say, uh, I've got danger sense him, too. Lock so. him, pull, lock him pulls out on his longbow, notches an arrow, see if he can and see if he can fire and see if he can fire it. Hold, through the, the, through the hold on. Before. What was it you just said? As, no, he's, as he's knocking, oh, knocking it, I'm going to be like, oh, we're trying to be peaceful here, Larkin. What, what um, was that you just said in Dwarvish? Uh, I said, open the door or they'll live to regret it. 
Very well. Oh, um, sure. That, 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 that's really peaceful. I, I walk. I start More walking. peaceful than shooting at them. I start walking towards the, the hole that is having arrows shot out of it. Um, defensively. So I'm dodge actioning. Okay. We'll say he fires off again. And, yep, misses again. This guy is obviously not a training. I shouldn't even give him proficiency, I don't think. <laughs> I look directly <laughs> through the hole. And I, you just see like a slightly panicked look on him now. He's like, this person's invincible. I go true form. <laughs> mm. I open my mouth wide and I repeat again, let us in or you'll live to regret it in Dwarvish. <laughs> That's pretty terrifying. Uh, roll me an intimidation check. <laughs> That's good. Uh, I'm good at those, apparently. Mm -hmm. Never mind, no, I'm not. <laughs> 13? That was a 9 13. plus 3. 4, yeah. Uh, well, he's shitting himself, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> You just see him like uh, nodding as he ducks down again. I just turn around and give a thumbs up, and then turn back into back to normal. Uh, whilst whilst we're waiting for this to happen, um, what are we what are we actually trying to get out of this? Like, what what is my what am I going to try and get them to repair the crystal? And we're going to see what's going on there. That sounds like uh, a bad idea. Yeah. We've We've just we we just need to gather information. That's all we got hired for. Okay. All right. It's at this point those who understand Dwarvish can hear shouting inside, going, "Are you crazy? We're not letting them in there. We've got the advantage. Get back there and continue firing." Um, I'm gonna hearing this walk up to the door once again, um, and I am going to knock on it. Uh, but I am going to use uh, minor illusion, illusion to every time I like knock on the uh, door to create a very thunderous. Actually, you know what? No, I'm not. I am going to hit the door and I'm going to use knock, and it's going to open. <laughs> <laughs> okay. You cast knock on the door. You see the doors fly open. And you notice there is now a giant hole in front of you and there's a drawbridge that's been knocked up. Mm -hmm. mm. Which well, seems to be, we presume, the cranking stupid. sound and the fud at the end was. So you still can't see inside, but there's now a hole in front of you. Question. Yes. Tipping this drawbridge up, is it rope or is it chain? Looks to be chain. Okay. Um, so there's a giant just here in Dwarvish. How do they get through the door? It's not that hard to push. <laughs> Go back already. <laughs> uh, how, no, no, how... there's a monster out there. It would eat me. It will eat you in here if we let them in. Go now. Or I'm going to feed you to Mr. Ogre here. No matter what are they seeing. Um, they're saying go back out there and close the doors and stop it from going on. Uh, or they're going to feed that person to Mr. Ogre there. Um, uh, so I presume they as... have So they as have as a monster. As... Great. As soon as Larkin hears this, he's, uh, his oh. eyes go yellow, blue to yellow as he casts Zephyr Strike and he's going to start sprinting towards oh, the no. card to, see, oh, if he, no, no, to no. see if he can get there Ooh. before the dwarf gets there to shut the door again. Um, so you're going to rush over to the bunker? Yes. Okay, you rush over to the bunker. Uh, how are you getting into the bunker? Uh, I'm gonna, I'm going to lockpick the door. There's no door. The door's been opened. There's just it's the door bridge. In the bunker, there's no door. Yeah. Okay. I believe um, it probably would be they they come from under the ground into the bunker. Question. Yes. Do I see, um, like a mechanism on the other side of this drawbridge to lower it? Uh, if you mean like a lever, no, but you do see like the gears and the chains on either side. Uh, okay. I guess I'm just going to start throwing out acid splashes at the gears then. And once they break, the chains will likely go loose and the drawbridge will drop. Okay, so you start firing off acid splashes. You now hear inside with drawbridge like, what the hell are they doing now? <laughs> Is that a sizzling sound? <laughs> 
I'm gonna drink one of my potions of wonders in preparation for the coming battle. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, head, I'll head back over to the group. Uh, which version? Greater, it was greater. I've got one left now. Greater, greater. Roll After me a this. d15 then, please. After this, I've got one left, is what I mean. Okay. You kind of start hearing as I, I think they're smarter Nine. than we thought. Somebody go get Nilda. Nine. Oh, we've had that one before. Oh, huh. do we want to roll it again? Uh, yeah, sure, why not? Just, just, just for more fun. Three. We've had that one as well, roll again. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> what was it, D15? Right. Eleven. Eleven, we definitely haven't had that one. Cool. Oh, okay, well let's really hope you don't get that rage. You can now freely misty step for a D4 amount of hours. <laughs> Wow! Whoa. I will now roll my d4. One. Okay, <laughs> fuck you, d4. <laughs> so you got an hour of that. Okay, so the acid splashes are going. You heard they're apparently saying something about going and getting teleport across the gap. Yeah. Do you reckon, uh, do you reckon you can... uh, Yes, you can. Cool. Okay. So you're going to teleport inside? I'm full Enderman mode. Oh, God, yeah. Are you teleporting inside? Inside uh, before where? the drawbridge goes down. Uh, inside the place. Is it? Can I see the inside? You cannot. Then no, can't see it. Okay. Ah, oh, fair. I mean, you can get can into you the bunker. Take if you anyone wanted. when you missed a step. It's that's thunder step. No, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, thunder step. Thunder step. You can one. miss step now. Oh, okay. Hmm. Anyway, after a while, and you see here a bunch of shuffling. <laughs> uh, eventually. The chains start to break on both sides. You just... As the dust seems to climb up over your faces, uh, Nova has to cough a little bit and clean it off of his bread. You just see in front of you... It's not just an ogre in front of you. It seems to be an ogre zombie. Uh, A zoga. A zoga. Very much a zoga. And uh, two dwarves, the one with the heavy crossbow at hand, seemingly still shitting himself, and another one, uh, which seems to have like a charlatan hammer in hand, ready for battle. I turn you to all uh, roll me initiative. Raise my hat. Oh, okay. oh, I was going to say, I turn to the party and say, none lethally, guys. Shit, <laughs> 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 uh, <laughs> uh, went off the uh, table. That's, that's, a, that's a 20, by the way, Callum. Well, I'm not asking for them yet. I think, so. I think my dice is uh, possessed by the axe beak because it just hopped out of the dice train off the desk. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, anyway, even that's worse. the other side of the uh, the drawbridge bit. <laughs> the cage is over there. Is where the ogre zombie was. I'm fine with I going might... last. It's fine. Don't worry about I... it. Now the picture doesn't show it very well, but there's like more walls surrounding the hole, like the sausages. <laughs> Sorry. So is okay, this the so bunker or 20... is this the doors? Hmm? Is this from the bunker? This is not the doors? bunker. This is going through the main doors. Right, okay. You can't... Uh, uh... There's like the little uh... metally wooden bit is the bridge. Right, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. I thought it was going towards the bunker. I was like, how big is this bunker? It's got a drawbridge in it. I was very confused. My bad. <laughs> oh, actually, no. I fucked up the direction. So you wouldn't have seen the hole. The drawbridge would have just been up the wrong way. For whatever reason. Anyway, it doesn't matter. It's there now. You can see everything. So, what do we, who got above 20? 23. Ooh. Fucking. You said you had a nat 20. What's that? Yeah. I didn't get a nat 20. I got a 20. Oh, you just got 20, 20. Okay. Mm. So, 20 for Larkin. You should have still said it there. 15 to 20. Oh, okay. Never mind. No one? No one at all. 10 to 15. Uh, 14. Oh. Uh, is 12 for Freya? Yes. Okay. What did Nomad get? Nomad got a 5. 5. What did Pastel get? 4. Uh, cool. Don't sound so defeated, guys. No, so, I'm fine with going last. Up, fur. Is that everyone? 
Yes. Except for Nova, he's uh, eating bread. Yeah, yeah. Nova is currently at the back. He's looking at the X beaks. He's not that far back. <laughs> Lyle, you're up Come front. On, we need someone looking up front. We're up first. Uh, how far away am I from the ogre and from the the two Durga? From the ogre, you're about ten foot away. He seems to be right in front of the uh, end of the drawbridge. Uh, the Draugas, you're about fifteen foot away. Uh, if I was to go up to one of the Durga, would I would the ogre get an attack of opportunity? Uh, you'd be right next to the ogre, but you he wouldn't have an opportunity attack. Okay. Um, as Lau has the sword summoned out, um, he's gonna turn to Pastel and say, "Um, I'm sorry, but considering who they're working for, I'm gonna kill at least some of them." As he's gonna rush forward to. Uh... Wasn't this your idea? <laughs> <laughs> Are we going for the one that shit himself or the other one that's telling him to stop shitting himself? The one that's telling him to stop shitting himself. Okay. So I'll make He proceeds to shit himself. I'm going to make two attacks. Not going to use uh, any spells or that yet. Uh... Do, 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 do. Sorry, hold on. Uh, that is. Uh, a natural one. You're kidding me for the first one. That misses, nat I think. Yeah, nat one for the first yep. one. Second one. Are you kidding me? I rolled a one and a two. That's ten. The uh, you somehow as you swing, swing the intimidation factor of this giant ogre zombie apparently got to your mind a bit as you just missed the Dura guys. It swings back with his hammer. Okay. Uh, that will be my turn. <laughs> That's literally what I was going to do. Something okay, like. Larkin. So, uh, Larkin, without breaking a sweat, um, Hunter's Mark on the uh, on the zombie ogre. Um, okay. Uh, then you then he reaches into his quiver, pulls out a familiar looking gun, points it straight at the ogre's head, and then shoots it twice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Natural one. Oh my what? god. <laughs> <laughs> you're a you're guy, your abilities to get inside wait impeccable. Your yeah. chances to hit. No. Rob, did you did you roll that again, that natural one? Cause cause you're a half. Oh no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Yeah. It's too late now, isn't it? Too uh, late. Okay. Just Can't a reminder that you do have that. Uh, yeah. So the second one's the nineteen. I forgot about that. That one does hit the uh the og the ogre. Okay. Uh, so and damage. sneak attack because Lyle's right next to him. Mm. I mean, what an advantage Lyle's giving you with standing right next to that ogre. Like phew. twenty-four damage. Twenty-four damage. Nice. You just knock off as you fire it off. You see a literal hole go through its shoulder. Its left arm now looking a bit flimsy, but luckily for it, its right arm's what the weapon's in. Okay. Hmm. Is that your turn, Larkin? Yes, that's my turn, because I've used my... No! Uh, so how close am I towards all of these guys? Uh, would you say he was right in front of the door? Uh, when it went Perhaps. down? I wasn't entirely sure. You're either, saying, you're either yes. 15 foot away or 20, so you're in range either no, way. That's, 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 that's... Callum. Yes. Is the damage type of the of the laser gun still radiant damage? Because if yes. so, the ogre, the ogre would take double damage. Because it's it does not take double damage. You shouldn't. You're not DM. You don't choose that. Okay, I'm just want to bring it up. First of all, it doesn't take double damage. Thirdly, it now has resistance. So continue. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, North is not going to run in this time because he wants to make sure he's back enough to look after Cho. He's, he's got a new friend. Like your dagger wakes up. It's like, oh, what are we doing? Hmm. Oh, yes, 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 fine. Don't, don't, don't worry. I'm going to do some magic for a change. And I'm going to do the good old wizard's magic missile at third mm -hmm. level. Oh. 
So that gives me how many darts does that give me? Three, three, five? Five darts in total. I think right. it's five. Someone it's, correct me if it's I'm a, wrong. It's, it's three plus one for every spell level higher than five. Then yeah, it'll be five. Yeah. So five. Is it possible to send three towards the ogre and then one to each Duragar? Of course it is. Sweet. Okay. So, so do the ogre do... first. I will. That is two. The Duragar. There's a monster out there, also the Duragar. This is our pet zombie Seven. ogre. <laughs> so that's ten to the ogre. Ten to the ogre. First Duragar, who was shitting himself, gets five. Oh. That's how we do max damage with a magic missile. And when telling him not to shit himself, that's free. Oh, that's why he's not shitting himself. Damn straight. <laughs> he's currently defending off Lyle, sees this missile, and only just gets his arm up to not get full damage off it. But the other <laughs> one's watching the combat and not paying attention gets splashed in the face. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Okay. I will tell what you like to transform into Lyle's sword. Because why not? Uh, as you do that, it's a floppy version of it again. <laughs> but, no, I told you, I, I can't copy that. I, 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 I thought oh. maybe during the travels you would have gotten better. It's, it's okay, it's okay. Uh, oh, wow. wrong with you? No, no, listen, that's a, a very, that's like a packed weapon. I copy actual weapons. They're like very complicated. I genuinely it's... thought that Frank was going to go for us. It's okay, happens to the best of us. You know, one in five men suffer with. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I, was, I was trying not to. I was thinking, no, I wouldn't say that, would he? Would he? He probably would have done that. <laughs> I, I can copy someone else's weapon. Do you want me to copy the hammer? Sure. Which hammer? It's now a hammer. It looks just like the Duragars. Actually, what is the ogre wielding? The ogre seems to be wielding a, a very large morning star. However, it doesn't seem to be made of charlatan like the hammer. Is it saloon branded? Oh. <laughs> uh, it is not. <laughs> Damn it. I will copy the hammer. I will copy the hammer. That's cool. Okay, okay. Uh, Freya. Um, Freya is going to run forward and uh, she's going to use her climbing speed to kind of like run up the front of the ogre and uh, bite him in the neck. Okay, she's going for the o no uh, the ogre's neck, the ogre's neck. <laughs> yes. Go for it. Go for it. Uh, plus. Okay, why isn't that working? I don't know, but just roll the real dice. it'll be amazing if you miss. <laughs> you're not doing an exclamation mark. You're doing a L or a uh, 1 or something. Oh, yeah. How do you mess that up? <laughs> I don't know, but I've been feeling kind of loopy today. Yeah, I've been feeling a bit it's tired. It's the heat. Definitely. We're not prepared for this. Oh, that nice. just hits. That's, that's only like over three times it's Did somebody say <laughs> just hit? Jesus Christ. Uh, like I said, if you missed, I couldn't believe it. Okay. While this is 1D8. happening, Nomad, you'll be next. I have a think what you're doing. Uh, 1d8 plus. Uh, yes, that's how badly they rolled. <laughs> plus. Fuck's sake. Plus five. That's 13 damage. So that's max. Nice. 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 Simple maths. Simple maths. Got it. All right. As you just see Freya lunge at the throat, ripping off a good amount of it. You see lots of organs fly across the bridge. Uh, the creature's head's almost tips back, almost like it's going to fall off, but he seems to still be attached just. Nearly uh, headless ogre. Nearly headless ogre. That Jesus is phrased uh, nomad. Hello. Um, it's your turn. Yes. So I'm going to turn to the others and just say um, I don't particularly want to kill them, um, but 
the one with the crossbow. Yeah, I think he should definitely live. Um, and then I'll shout out to them in Dwarvish. Um, I did tell you. Uh, and then, you know, true anime moment, eyes will flash. Uh, and I'm going to <laughs> quicken spell uh, Mind Sliver, the, the uh, one that's chatting all the shit. Um, so that's an intelligence that? saving throw. I believe that's the one with a big hammer. Okay. Intelligence saving throw. He has advantage. That Duragar of Resilience. That is a 12, though. That is a fail. Mm-hmm. So he takes... Failure for Dwarf. Uh, seven he's, points he's got of advantage, psychic damage. He's got zero. How much psychic damage, sorry? Seven points of psychic damage. Seven points of psychic damage, got it. Um, and then with that, uh, Nomad's also going to... Um, raise his hand and create that like ethereal galaxy purpley dark uh, whip and strike it across at them and I'm going to use Tasha's mind whip on him <gasps> uh, so that is another intelligence saving throw but minus a d4 this time minus a d4 okay d4 is not needed apparently I'm not good at advantages so that's another fail. Okay. So this time it is 3d6. Oh. Spicy. <gasps> the spice. Uh, so that's 15 points of damage. I rolled really well there. Oh, how's that um, Duragar die? Oh, shit. He's got 14. Oh, no. Uh, Nomad wouldn't want to do it lethally. <laughs> Too late for um, that. He didn't say that. He did say keep one of them alive. Yeah. 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 Um. Uh. I. I guess. Just with that whip and the intense uh, mental strain that would come with it, uh, they just start bleeding out of the eyes and nose and ears, and then they drop to the ground. You see the Duragar. Just fall to the ground, and the one that shitted himself can no longer release any more as he has lost his mind. <laughs> uh, Nomad is going to stay very still in this pose now. Um, he's full panic mode, but he's not showing it. At least okay. to those that you don't know. Okay. Pastel, you're next. Can I see? Okay, work with me here. Yes. Can I see any loose bricks? Uh, no. There's no bricks. What about like blocks of bricks put together that I could pick it's up? It's all one rocky surface. They've just dug into it. Okay. I can't be Minecraft Enderman. Uh, instead. <laughs> that's fine though. That's that's fine. Um, how big is the ogre? Uh, he is considered large. We'll say he's eight foot tall. He, oh, so he's not. Oh, okay. I thought he'd be bigger. Um, I I would like. He's lost a little bit since his head's hanging off. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> I would like to, if possible, misty step behind him. Yeah, you can see that. You can see behind him. And then I would look. Oh wait, no, I don't want to do that. I want to run behind him. Because that would take up my bonus action. I need to enter a rage. Rage. Oh, no, no, this is free. Okay. <laughs> the Bottle of Wonders makes it free. So you get one free action Jesus. each time. Okay. I mean, like I, I said, 11 to 15 are stronger than 5 to 10. And da, da, da. Okay. But yeah, you teleport there. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a rage, which gives me... <laughs> okay. Imagine if you missed a step one again. <laughs> it's not... It's a good one. <laughs> okay. uh, so, a weapon I'm holding becomes light and has the throne property and returns to my hand when I want it to uh, at the end of my turn. Nice. So, um, yeah. I don't know what weapon I'm having. Let's say it is a folding chair. Okay. <laughs> because I can't... Captain America folding chair. Oh my god, I didn't even think Captain America. Yeah, I guess it goes. Uh, 
So we're going for the wrestling steel chair to the back angle. Awesome. Yeah. So I'm 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 gonna I'm gonna throw my chair at him. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Yeet. Uh, recklessly. Okay. There's a. There's a... You're attacking the ogre. Yeah. Or are you attacking the the ogre. Fourteen. Does that hit? Okay. Yep. His AC is eight. Cool. Uh, how much damage does a folding chair? Do? Uh, I think it was a. I said I liked it before, so didn't I say it was a D8 or something? D8 sounds about right. Max damage. Uh, that's eight plus five is thirteen. Almost forgot my rage damage. damage. There, but I got it. Um, so that's the first attack. Does he turn around? Yep. Uh, you smack him in the side, and I mean, did you hit him in the right and the back? No, I hit him in the back of the head. That's what I'm going for. You hit him in the back of the head. You squish his face a little bit so it even bends back a bit more. So it technically looks like he's looking at you. Zombie because his head's people. just Don't that worry about far it. back. Uh, okay. And uh, then I'm going to... Um, wow. Well, I know what I want to do, but that rage has kind of ruined it. So I'm just going to do it again. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, I can't, because it comes back at the end of my turn, so I've got to choose a different weapon now. Um, I'm going to stab him with a shard. Okay. He's not a person, so <laughs> fine. Stab him with the shard? Yeah. Hold on, one sec. Are we creating a god here by accident? <laughs> wait, what? So, I need Freya, I need Lyle, I need you, Pastel, mm -hmm. you've got advantage, so because of danger sense, and I need that dwarf to roll me a dexterity saving throw. What about the? What about the? The ogre, ogre? is as well, but okay. The ogre's not going to succeed, I think. Fifteen. Nope, definitely doesn't succeed. He got a that, minus one. That's a seven. Fifteen. Uh, what did you get, Larkin? Thirteen. Not Freya, sorry. So Freya oh. and uh, Pastel, you succeed. So you take half damage here. Uh, the rest of them fail. So essentially, as you stab him in the back, you just see a tsh as the inside of its body, you see like sand start to appear as it bursts out. Oh no. Oh no. Dearling. This weapon is too much. So, Lyle, you take 40. Uh, everyone who failed got 40 points of damage. Lao is unconscious. So that ogre's out. <laughs> that dwarf is dead. There is a mini crater in the room. Those who succeed, you got 20 damage. What flavor of damage is it? Uh, force damage. Okay. Okay, so Fre uh, Freya gets blown back and she lands on her side, considering that was... Oh yeah, and the ones out. that failed also get knocked back 10 foot. Oh, it doesn't matter. Lao's out. He's unconscious. Uh, and then the echoes of the sound go throughout the halls. Oh yeah, that sends a message. We're coming for him. Okay, well that's the end of that combat. <laughs> Wait, is, is the Duragard dead? Yeah, you killed oh, the Duragard. No. He just dealt 40 damage to it. It doesn't have that much health. <laughs> I... Bloody hell. Like, literally, everyone just saw a humongous explosion of all this magic swirling round. As literally the ogre from the inside blew up, pieces went everywhere. Lyle went flying backwards. Freya went flying backwards. You held your ground. The the Duragar just got obliterated. Uh, oh no. Uh. Well, did Fre did Freya did Freya pass it as she fell? She succeeded, so she only took okay. twenty. But so I guess she didn't actually fly back. But, Is, you know. uh, does the shard change at all? Nope, still the exact same. Okay, I catch my chair. <laughs> uh, I unfold it. No, we're out of combat now. I unfold it, and then I drag Lyle's body onto it, and, like, look over to the rest of people for help. <laughs> I, I, I didn't know that would happen. When I tested it before, it just... It turned things to ash. 
Don't worry about it, we'll do it later. <laughs> we just we need to make sure everybody's okay first. Is he okay? It, 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 Lyle is out. He's bleeding. Do I need to make a death save on him, Callum? There's a person with bread in their mouth that will heal you. Uh, sorry, Lewis, I'm using one of your spell slots. <laughs> He's not gonna use Let's it. see. Actually, I'll just message him. <laughs> Let's see if he responds. Would Nova heal <laughs> Save Lyle. Lyle? He is dying. Would no. Nova <laughs> heal Lyle? He He's un is un dying. Un or un unconscious, he wants to say. It's always when someone's not here that shit goes wrong. Uh-huh. I'm sorry. I didn't know that would happen. It's random every Lacey, time. <laughs> Lacey lets off a fucking magical nuke. <laughs> Sad nuke. <laughs> sorry, not Lacey. Pastel lets off a magical nuke. Okay, I'm going to give him... Alright, so you don't have to do any death saves for five minutes. Chat away. We'll say, La... we'll say Nova's finishing off his bread. Uh, I'm, I'm making sure... Body I'm of salute. Sure prayers, okay. Yeah, body of saloon. I mean, I suppose. Uh, what did you say? Uh, I'm make I'm making sure uh, Frey's okay, and then after I've done that, I'm going to uh, transform. Uh, so I'm going to shift, and I'm going to see if I can tell if there's anyone coming towards us, and if so, uh, how many sets of footsteps uh, there are. Okay, roll me a perception check, please. Uh, that's an 18. 18, so you listen out. And we'll just say Lyle's up and we'll work out how much health you got in a minute. All right. Uh, I won't let combat start until you've actually got health. Because I'm just going to say he heals you with something. I'm just going to ask what level. So you listen out to the world around you. To your so on the map that's currently on there, mm. to your west, you hear a bunch of footsteps, but they don't seem to be going towards you. But they do seem to be in a rush. Uh, okay. To the north, you don't think you hear anything. To the south, you think you hear something quite in the distance, but you wouldn't say they're coming towards you yet. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to tell this to the rest of the group. Um. Oh, what what should we do? Uh, walk around, I guess. Uh, have a look what we can see, and take anything that we think might be of use or might provide us more information. Maybe we should hide. A uh, good point. Uh, you should up uh, up north. There didn't seem to be much sound. That's probably uh, the best place to go to for the time being. Good point. I'd like to turn into a Durga. One of the ones, the one that had the hammer. Okay. Oh, wait, no, I can't turn into he dead turned... guys. Never mind. He's mega dead. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. He, yeah, yeah. The dead guy, or the already dead guy is obliterated. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, Nomad's going to go up against one of the walls and use minor illusion to cr become an outcropping in one of the walls. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd like to turn to... into Nomad right now in this moment. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. Because that would hurt him. Uh, Larkin's going to uh, slam his hands together. You watch as he whistles, um, making bird calls with his, sound with his uh, hands. And Freya turns from a wolf into a crow. Uh, and Larkin's going to uh, stealth and try and hide somewhere. Okay, so I heard one person at a wall. Where? Which wall? What wall? Where are we hiding? The north room, with... wasn't it? Imagine if we've come in, it would be just to like off to the side of one of the like doors. There's no doors. They're just open passageways. Oh, I forgot. Sorry, it goes. Yeah, it goes like doors into. Oh, the, except for like... south, there is a door south. So I guess I could technically uh, show you what west and east looks like from where you are. Uh, yeah, Let's do good. that. I'm interested in that well. You go check out what the well if you want. 
There's an awful lot to check out the well, yes. Dwarf hand comes out of it and like, drags you down. So that's west of ya. Mm-hmm. Okay. And north of ya. Sorry, I'm also looking up to see if there's some healing benefits that comes with his class. <laughs> I think he has spare the dying, doesn't he? He does have spare the dying, but he... I'm but just that, making him heal. But that would, like, <laughs> put Lyle out of commission for a while. No, but I mean, like... Uh, oh, wait, and I guess so anyway, so I guess there is okay. a door there, but that door has been thrown open. So you see that north way. Okay. Hmm. Uh, I'm happy to go where everyone else wants to go. Um, I'm sorry, I haven't... Uh, Nomad's blatantly avoiding looking at the bodies. Um. There's no benefits, so we're just going to say it's a first level. <laughs> Maybe we should put them down the hall. Uh, let's see what they have on them first. That's good. As uh, as Larkin's going to look through the uh, the corpses to see if they can find anything useful. Uh, very difficult. They're obliterated. Okay. <laughs> except, except for the charlatans in uh, metal. That seems to be in intact still. Okay. Uh, and Lyle, we're going to put you on 8 health if you put a first level cure wounds. That may change depending on a message in the future. Okay. But at least you've got an idea. So I will Lyle... say, if we get into another combat, we'd probably stop it there anyway. We're getting later in. That's fine. Uh, Lyle will shake out of it and look up and be like, what, what, what happened? Um, I just saw an explosion in front of me and I was Knocked out. Everybody's just covered in zombie guts. <laughs> <laughs> um, Blood, guts, and sand. Well, you know that Sandman that we fought back in the underground forest? Yes. You know the shard from his belly? Oh, don't tell me you did what I f- did. I shanked him with it. Oh, boy. <laughs> did, right? Sorry? And it exploded, right? Something like that. Did it kill the Duragar? Yep. Ah, uh, at least it killed those. <laughs> Wasn't my intention, but uh. I know we have to keep some of them alive, but still, Just try and be a bit more careful next time. It does nothing to help our cause. Using my using my cloak to kind of like make sure I touch my skin. I'm gonna pick up the Charlotte and weapons. And uh, pull it, put it in uh, into like my bag or something like. That. Okay, so using your cloth, you pick it up. As you're doing this, Narf, you said you wanted to check out the little well. Yes, please. When you think of a classic well, you know, with a nice wooden bucket, chain, little handle to stir it down. Uh huh. At the bottom, uh, which, by the way, the walls look completely frozen over. You do see a mini stream, which you, with your amazing knowledge, and me just wanting to tell you, looks like it's connected to the stream that was outside. I'm so glad you told me that. North would not have been able to put those two and two together. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. oh, okay. Uh, what weapons do I pick up, Callum? Uh, a hammer. Okay. Uh, is it just a hammer or is it a warhammer? Or... Uh, it is a warhammer. Is it um is the like entire thing made of charlatan or is the entire thing is made of charlatan? That's why he's avoiding. He can't it pick it up by the handle. Oh okay. Um, Callum, if you don't if you don't mind, because I'm running on a little sleep and I've got work in the morning at five a.m. Um, I'm gonna go now. So yeah, yeah that's fine. Uh, I will see you guys Wasted soon. That cure wounds on loyal juice. I'll be playing much longer anyway. Oh, <laughs> Lewis just messaged me. Let's say second level. Ah, too late now. It's fine. Uh, North push. We'll fix that next time. Yeah. down the well. <laughs> <laughs> I kid. I kid. What's that, Freya? Lock. Uh, Lyle fell down a well. Ugh. <laughs> 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 right. Uh. So North will start heading north, assuming as that was the place where no footsteps were heard from. Uh, assuming yeah. that's where most people were heading. I'll follow. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, everyone going that way? Yeah. yeah. Fair enough, fair enough. All right, so you start going north. You see uh, that open area there. Second picture. Uh, in this open area, one thing you notice, there seems to be a... Uh, almost like... It's like one of those windows where you can only see through one side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can see through it this side, but when you was walking up, you could not see them uh, at all. So you can see through it, and there also seems to be a lever here that you presume is for the drawbridge. That's pointless now. Okay. <laughs> Did we put uh, nothing else really here seems all that uh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Should we continue on down the corridor then? Uh, would it be useful to put... Oh, no, 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 you've broke the change. Never mind. Yes, yeah, sorry. My bad. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> Down the end, though, you do see some uh, a pathway that seems to get to like an armory. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Okay. There if you guys armor. wish to go to that okay. bit, sure. Weapons good. <laughs> you get to the armory section, and uh, first things you noticed, there seems to be a wide array of armors and. Uh, well, weaponry. There seems to be two scale mail armors, but they are made of charlatan and a size for dwarves. Uh, one of them looks like it's partly finished, like it's still a work in progress. Uh, there's some normal javelins. There's some normal war picks. There seems to be two climbers kits, some mess kits, uh, and a trap door that goes somewhere. Um, how many javelins are there? There is nine. Okay. Um, my quiver can hold up to uh, 18 javelins, so I'm going to pick up all of the javelins and distribute them later. Okay. Okay, and I'll say on the uh, the war picks and the javelins, they all seem to have a very interesting symbol upon them. Are they are they entirely charlatan, or is like the handles wood? So, or... only the armor is charlatan. Got it. The rest of the things I've said are not made of charlatan. I'll take a war pick. I mean, we can just pick up a war pick. So the war and then... pick and the javelins, and the they've pick. got a symbol. Yeah, of course. And they've mm -hmm. got like a symbol on them where it looks like there's like a cradle child and two eyes staring down upon it. I fucking knew it! Oh no. Sure, what did you know, Larkin? What was that? Sorry, that was, that was, that was outside of game. Yeah, yeah that's the fear. Never would have guessed. <laughs> that's worrying. Um... So if, no, if nobody else takes anything, Larkin is quickly going to put the clams kit, so like everything else he can carry in his bag, and uh, and then he's going to try and see if he can open. Or maybe okay, how are you picking up the scale mails? Uh, I'll leave. I'll. Uh, hmm. I've got a second cloak. I can wrap it up in that. They're large things because it's full on dwarver. Dwarves, so you can't get both of them in a I'll, single I'll leave, cloak. I'll leave, the, I'll leave the scale mail. Okay. So I, there's two climbers kits, two mess kits, and a war pick, yeah? Uh, there's three war picks, but one has been taken by Lacey, and one of the climbing kits has also been taken by a pastel. Okay. Which is the same person. Yeah, yeah it sounded <laughs> like you were talking about two different people. That was... <laughs> I know, but... Uh, Go on, this, this, I'll, I'll take a climbing kit, why not? Well, the reason okay, why so I want no to climb this for you. is because that they have boot tips on them, mm -hmm. and I have a, I have an arm strike proficiency. How many mess kits are there? There is four. Okay, four mess kits. So I'm, I'm going to start doing some Captain Falcon level kick. <laughs> and then there's two war. Uh, okay, so. Does the trap door open? It does. Okay, what's down there? I'm gonna have Seems all those to be a path. Down. Okay. Um, there's a path that continues down here. Should we go down? Is there a ladder down, or do we just jump? Does it sound like there's there anything ladder. down there? I, I'd find it more problematic going further down when we don't even know what's fully up here. We need a a decent escape route before we try and yeah. um, the, carry on. The fact they had an undead is quite worrying. Hmm. 
I'd like to make here, sure up here is at least safe, so if we need to run, we can get out without being cornered on both sides. Okay, should we go down the other? Should we go back and go down the other hallway then? Yeah. Um. Um. Actually, is there I any think... like crates around or anything like that? Like something. Uh, big? There were some barrels that had like the javelins in, but nothing oh, in. Uh, this... Nothing that would have stuff in it. Right. Okay. What about, what about those those shields? Huh? Were there shields there? Hmm? Yeah, the shields, shields on the image. Oh. I mean, that's just random pictures they put on. Oh, okay. uh, yeah, yeah, I'm, I'm going to look for like anything heavy or something to try and like wedge the trap door closed for the minute. Um, I mean, nobody's picked up the armors. You could put the armor on there. Yeah, I, I guess I'll just use like my foot and kind of just drag it along with my foot to put on top of the thing because I don't want to touch it. I mean, they're quite heavy. No, Lacey, do you want to use your start. foot as well? Okay, what? everyone together. We, we kick it on three. <laughs> One, <laughs> two, three. I'll say gonna, after Larkin's a while, you've managed his... to get it. I was going to say, Larkin gets his other cloak out and just... <laughs> what are we kicking? Uh, the oh, armor to put on top of the trap door. Oh. Just so nothing comes up. Yeah. Okay. okay. There's yeah. now armor on a trap door. So we're gonna we're we're rushing down to the other hallway, yeah. Sneakily, quietly rushing down to the other. Mm hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Sneaky, quietly rushing to the other hall. Yes. <laughs> it's very <laughs> some style. stealth checks then. Just because we heard footsteps, we're not messing with the shoot. Stealth. Oh, that's free. Hey, 21. 13. Uh, 9. God really? damn it. <laughs> Is that for you stealth? or Freya? Uh, that's for me. Uh, Freya, to you, please. Yes. He catches a glimpse of the moon outside and can't help but howl. <laughs> <laughs> it's only like half past four. Uh, <laughs> six. Freya's got a six. Okay. And what did Nomad get? Sorry, what am I rolling again? Stealth. Stealth check. Oh, I mean, you don't have to be stealthy. Good. Four. Four. Okay, so you guys think you're stealthy. Mm hmm. As you're sneaking along. I think you're just a bit louder because you've got all this stuff in your bag now. The mess yep. kit's just rattling about. It's rattling about because Nova keeps on trying to get into it to eat the fucking bread. <laughs> <laughs> Every like five steps you hear, Nova, get out! <laughs> <laughs> so, are we going south or west? Uh, go west. Go. Yep, go west. Go west. So, uh, you see the uh, the picture at twenty three twenty four. That's what you see. Mm -hmm. uh, at the other end, you seem to see there seems to be some duragar at the other end, all kind of like hiding and behind walls. Uh, and there seems to be, well, you can see on the picture, there's like a wall dash, then more wall. Yeah. And they seem to just be staring at you, ready with weapons ready. We reverse. I'd like to point out that we are all covered in nothing but gore. Yes. I never said they weren't scared. <laughs> yeah. Um... Can I just, can I just I'll... stare at them? Yeah, yeah come on, int intimidation shout out check. In, uh, dwarvish. Um, we gave them the option to let us in peacefully. I'm gonna. It's at this point you see one of them pull a lever. Oh. And the, uh, I'm gonna shape. You see the two small. Hmm? I'm gonna shape change into the biggest bad in the ass is looking Goliath you've ever goddamn seen, and I'm just gonna flex my muscles and look at them terrifyingly. And Fair enough. Them. You turn into drum. I've not seen yeah! Drom. Yeah. Why would Drom have I mean, seen... Uh, okay. I don't know. You've travelled. 
<laughs> you know your history well. There was that one time that Goliath fell in the hole. He yeah. left. Sorry, I'm in a You've Goliath. heard the tales of the dragon. Sorry, I'm in a Goliath picture book. Anyway, so you see where there's the holes in the middle of the room, mm-hmm. like the gaps. Yeah. You see l- large spikes just fall down uh, in front of it, and you just see one of the other people look over, and go, "We're supposed to wait for one of them to get through, so we could just attack that one by itself." And it's like, I prefer not to fight any of them personally. Um, seeing this, I'm going to hold out my hand and I'm going to create Mage Hand on the other side of these spikes and just simply lift the lever back up. You see the guy see what you're doing, just hold it down. We gave Um, them the option. I'm now giving you the option. Open it up and we won't harm you. You see him give you the middle finger. Well, all right, so Larkin, Larkin's going. What Larkin's going to do? Um, as, is he? Uh, he's going to um, run up, pull up, pull down his hood, pull down his mask, and then kind of like semi shift and kind of like growl and roar at them to try and like scare them back enough so uh, no man can kind of lift up the lever. Uh, so the lever is at the very back, so they can't move further back. Okay. But you do now look like a caged dog as you go straight to the bars. Which, by the way, the bars are so close to each other that not even Lal could squeeze through. In that case, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna use my cloak. Considering considering they dropped down, I'm going to use my cloak, hold one of them, and just try and li- and try and lift it up. Okay, you can roll me an athletics check if you like. Yeah. Right, excellent athletics. Uh, 19. Does not lift up. Shit. All right, seeing that this isn't uh, working. Guys, I, I, I've, I've got a, a something I could do. It's something I don't really like doing, but uh, it, it might make them decide to open up or at least distract them for a bit. What is it, no? <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty... Spot on impression! Spot on. You hear one of them shouting out in Jorvis saying, Nilda! <laughs> They're not giving up! Right. It's, it's, it's a spell that uh, opens up a portal to the underworld as such, and I can summon demons. It's a what? foul, disgusting spell, but I, I learned it in cases of uh, emergency as such. Nomad is genuinely shooketh looking over at Narf right uh, now. Um, I don't think we'll need that. No? I, I, yeah, I, th- I think we should avoid... Okay. okay. I mean, I can try and get them to back off from the leather. How how many of them and how close together are they all bunched? How high are the... Uh, there are three of them and they're all next to each other. How many spikes are there? How many spikes there are there? There are six in each gap. Cool, can I just lift them? <laughs> you can attempt to lift them as well. Athletics check, please. Um, come on, channeling drum. Uh, wait for Lacey. Uh, wait for Pastel to finish. 16. Uh, and then I shall. Nope, not enough. All right. Uh, Nomad's going to uh, keep looking over towards the dwarves. But he's going to kneel down and um, place his palm against the floor uh, with a little tentacle in the base of it. Uh, And with this, it starts creating lots of constellations on the floor around where his hand is. Uh, And whilst they light up in a a circle around his hand, it just goes very black. Uh, And I'm going to do Hunger of Hadar underneath all three of the dwarves on the other side. Um, okay. And I'm going to have them at the very front of it so they'd have to run through the entire 20 foot radius of it. Um, oh, man. So they That's all would need to make. Fucked up. It is a little bit. It's worse than the Nars, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very much. Do you know much what I just, just realised? By the way, that room is only 15 by 15 by 15 foot, so. So. They have to run through. They they cannot escape it. They just have to run away. 
Um, okay, so yeah, underneath them is going to just create an extremely large bli- uh, like black inky portal, um, which is just oh going to slowly start creeping up their legs. We shot down uh, Narf's idea, and now no man's doing this. I was, was going <laughs> to say, it's like, yeah, uh, I'm not summoning a demon, I'm summoning the abyss. <laughs> You can, you can, you can just teleport. I just realised. Pastel could just teleport inside and just like Fuck, beat them yes. away and pull up the lever. Oh yeah. <laughs> so anyway, how much Sorry, damage? Girls, what like, saves do I have to do? Uh, uh, let's go. Uh, dexterity saving throw from all three of them, please. Okay. I'm fully in character. I forgot that I could do that. <laughs> I'm just gonna do it as a bunch roll. They all fail. They all fail. Okay. So they all immediately take 2d6 cold damage. They use a lot of d6s. I like this. So that's 9 cold damage they all take. 9 cold um, damage? Hmm. And, uh, uh, and this is just constant damage, is it? This, if they don't leave it, uh, it's difficult to rain, and if it starts its turn within it, it takes another d6, 2d6 acid damage. No, any, any turn that if it starts its turn in there, it takes 2d6 cold damage, and if it ends its turn in there, it takes 2d6 acid damage. Uh, just, let's just go to... You just see them all leave it and go down south through a door. Okay, that's good. Uh, with that, I'm going to use the mage hand to open up the lever. Okay. Lever is open. Um... When the uh, when we go through, I'm going to uh, ask Pastel ask Pastel to break the lever to make sure they can't use it to put it back right, down again. Right? Yes. Yes. I am Drum the Fearless, and I will smash. <laughs> oh, God, I love I love this. I uh, love this. Yeah, it's fan service. Uh, Twenty three yeah. to hit the lever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna it say you can snap it. That wasn't even reckless. That was just. <laughs> the power you of snap. drum flows through you! <laughs> you snap it perfectly as you see a huh. shut door just to the south. I have united the Goliath tribes once before! This lever is nothing before me! Yeah! You kind of hear, surprisingly, in common this time on the other side of the door. I don't know who you all are, but if you come I just in here. Told you, I am I have not... the fearless! <laughs> I will kill us all if you come in here. Wait, what? <laughs> so it turns back into normal form. <laughs> I have a scroll of big power. If you come in here, you're all going to die. I do know that spell. Big power. Uh, can you do me a favor? Can one of you guys open that? Uh... <laughs> You don't, you, don't need to, you don't need to go in, you just need to open the door. I think they're bluffing. I'm going to open the door. Uh, Larkin's holding his action to fire at like any, anything that looks like a scroll when the door opens. Okay. Roll me a d4, and we'll see which one you hit. Okay. They've got uh, four scrolls. I'm, I'm going to keep my eye out for that as well. I'm going to attach those, those boot tips to my one boots. <laughs> That's a three. Three. Okay, so you fire it off. Roll to hit. Okay, so that'll be a long one. That's a 27. 27 does hit. Only just, though. <laughs> like it. And that's uh, 10 damage. 10 whole damage. I'm, well, I, you hit I'm... the right guy as he gets knocked back a bit, but then he, as soon as he sees the door open, he starts spouting out the words that seems to be on a scroll in by his the, hands. By the way, I'm not aiming for him. I'm aiming for the scroll in his hand. Yeah, he did say that he was aiming for the scroll. Okay, you hit the scroll and not him, so you don't deal any damage to him. He then rushes over to the scroll and starts trying to say it. Ah, shit. Can I do my teleport? <laughs> I just shoved my hand over his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> you shove your hand over your, his mouth. I would now need everyone to roll me initiative, and we'll do that next time. Uh, do you want the numbers now? No. Okay. We'll do that, that next time. That is an 11. <laughs> no, we'll do it next time. Oh, shit, sorry.
So I rolled an 18, yeah. I'm, I'm, go I'm just going to write that down and remember it for next time. Uh, also, this is a very small room, so it'll be interesting mm -hmm. to see how this goes. Oh, I'm going to use a shard again, it'll be room? fine. <laughs> oh yeah, blow, blow up everyone. I'm not going to do that. <laughs> So we do no, exactly it's what okay. the we're, 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 we're out of range. You're fine. You just stab it. No, you, you might still be in range. You don't know the things I've got on here. One of them I never said that was the most dangerous thing you wrote. Straight up be a nuke. I'm telling you. Well, thanks for tuning in the Mystic Tavern, or one of you. Um... <laughs> <laughs> what is no, going we, on with the viewership got, recently? We've got two now. We've got two now. We have not been getting right, any yeah. views lately. It's really disappointing. Um, other than, uh, yeah, so join us tomorrow for Rise of the Infernal Lords. You know how that goes. We're going to be fighting, possibly, uh, Arken the Crawl, who is a bit of a dick, um, and his total friend, who is really cool, honestly, and I wish he was on our side, but he's not. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, cool. Uh, next week, Icewind Dale is for the huge. Check out the YouTube if you missed anything. And uh, remember, uh, don't take your acting too seriously, because then you annoy the DM. Bye! Bye! Bye.